In over 20 years of salvage hunting, Drew Pritchard has learned that when one door closes, another one opens. A last-minute cancellation has left him stranded in Somerset with sidekick Julian. Rather than waste the trip, Julian has found a nearby collector who runs a museum dedicated to Bakelite. It's very difficult for me to describe how disinterested in Bakelite I am. It's not desperately hard on the top of my list, but it's nearby. Might learn okay. something. You know, he wants to go, we'll go. It's a day out for him. Collectors are an unpredictable lot. Some have a wealth of interesting things they're willing to sell, but others just want to show off their collections and hang on to it all. My name is uh, Patrick Cook, and I have been owning the Bakelite Museum for about 30 years. We've got coffins and plastic bikes and all sorts of extraordinary objects that you never guessed were made in plastic. There it is, to the Bakelite Museum. Oh, I'm so excited! Oh, yeah. Ooh. Bakelite, I love it. But it's always worth taking a chance, and already things are looking up. Oh, they've got a little dog. Oh, well, oh it's go. worth coming, coming the dog, for the right? little dog. Look at his little face. Hello. Hi, Patrick. Hello there. Hi, Drew. How nice are you doing? Meet you. Hi, Julian. Um, we believe you've got a Bakelite museum tucked away in here somewhere. Uh, tucked, absolutely, yes, in the deeper depths of Somerset. And he really wants to come and see it. So if we can learn sure, something. Sure. Come on in, yes, have a little uh, tour around the Bakelite museum. Wow. I love this toy here. That's the Sunbeam Landspeed record car. Absolutely, and that is more than a toy, really. It's, 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 to me, it's like an early executive toy. I keep I know everybody, I just walk around tapping everything. Is that what everybody does when they come uh, here? Yes, uh, everything's so tactile, you want to touch it. That is one of the largest pieces of cast phenolic, which is actually a very pure resin. You're able to achieve astonishing colours. OK. This is what all lazy bachelors should want. It's about 1930s, but they made them for many, many years. And uh, it's called the Tie Master, and it vomits out the tie <laughs> at some rate, fully pressed and ready to go off to work. <laughs> that was a strange thing. Despite his reservations, Drew sees something he wants amongst the exhibits. That's fantastic. That's a wonderful thing. Oh, I know. And it's full of hidden secrets. Look at that. I love that. Antique medical teaching tools are popular with specialist collectors. Something like this could fetch upwards of £200 at auction. So is that something, I mean, can I, would you sell this? You can buy things elsewhere, possibly, but not in the museum. With the objects in the museum, I get a lot of collectors, and uh, either they stay in the museum for a long time and they get um, absolutely intrigued. I would charge them bed and breakfast if I try and prize them out of the museum. This is Thank remarkably you. gruesome. Yeah. Shall I open my mouth now? Yeah, or... Jules. No, <laughs> for once, <laughs> definitely not. Look, it's belt. Is it belt driven? That would be driven by a it, string it, it, all the way through. So that's never going to get up to a really good fast lick, is it? So that's going to really hurt. Other collectors really can't cope. They're out in ten minutes uh, because there's a sort of competitive jealous element. I think yeah, these are just caps. Well I think these are ready-made caps and you just stick them on. Because quite a few things in here are quite fancy. Well, I specialise in disappointing people. <laughs> <laughs> the Bakelite is off-limits, but Drew soon finds there's more to Patrick than just old plastic. He mentioned he's got a load of gear in his sheds and that he used to be an architectural antique dealer 40 oh, years ago. Oh, Suddenly I'm incredibly interested. So, is there other things in here for sale? Uh, some are, yes. Some are. All right, OK. Possibly. Oh, this is good. What about, what about this, Patrick? Can this be sold? This British design classic dates back to the 1930s and carries the manufacturer's mark of Herbert Terry. Fully restored, this one could sell for £180. Do you want me to give you a price? £100. £100. I can't pay you £100. Can I give you a bid on it? Just to condition it's in. A little minor bid. A little minor bid. I'm going to go knock a fair wedge off, to be honest. I was going to say £60 in this condition. Had it too long. Ready for burnishing myself. I was going to go into the studio. I'll do a gesture. Gestures, you know, ten pounds. Ten pounds off. off. Ninety quid. Ninety pounds. All right, let's get the ball rolling. Ninety pounds. Deal. Yeah, that's done. Okay, great. We'll have that. Fab. There's lots of other things in here, Patrick. I can see straight away. These um, 
staircase balustrade sections here. These are the ones that would have been on the balcony, balconette panels. Clearly influenced by the late 19th century Glasgow school, Drew knows he can sell balustrades like these for around £40 each. 14 complete and all the rest are broken. What, what would you want to for, for one? That's just price them as a single single unit. Fifty pounds each. They went for. I can't. I can't get anywhere near that. What I'd like to pay for the pile is including that one there. So just the whole lot. Um, I think the most I'd want to pay would be a couple of hundred pounds for the lot. So what do you reckon then? Uh, Can we have a deal on those? Um, not at the two. Not two. All right. Well, well. You're welcome to go wander around. If it's playing on your mind, because they're the, the um, they're not standard railings. Let's just leave that for now. You know, just, just walk away from them, because I think he is quite keen to sell me some stuff here as well. He needs to clear that room. I get that feeling. I like this, Patrick, at the back here. Um, Palmit? Yes. Distress pieces are very fashionable at the moment, and Drew's interior design customers would happily pay up to £180 for this copper pelmet. What sort of price do you want for that, Patrick? One and a half. Oh, what? Really? Really? Oh, OK, then Re 300. <laughs> Your bargaining skills are, they leave a lot to be desired. How does um, 75 quid grab you? Uh, pretty insulting, yeah, I like this. <laughs> it's uh... not the... Where do you want to be? It's just got a lot of, it's pretty and everything, but it's got a lot of damage. It is, it is pretty. Well, what, what did I say? I mean, You actually... said 150, I, I went to 75. 125? Come on, I can go to 100, I think that's fair. Come on, I've come up. Well, because I feel sorry for you, yes. <laughs> thank you. I feel sorry for me all day long if you knock some money off. That's great, thank you. No, I love that. I keep noticing you've got uh, these things around. I think I've spotted two or three so far. Uh, these cast Gothic strap hinges, decorative strap hinges. Original door furniture of any period is easy to sell, but unusually ornate pieces like this could fetch £50 each. There's another one there. Do you want to drag that one down, Jules? Yeah. Go, no? This one's got damage, Drew. Ooh. That is, um... Oh, yeah, it's missing, nice a, one, it? missing a little trefoil. What are you going to sting me for these, then? Well, they, they look to me like £50 each. Ooh, so really? £50? Pounds it? Oh, no, we're... Oh, no. OK, you're yeah, back to the no, scrapyard prices, no, are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh you've well. been spoiled. No, we're miles apart on these. Can I just... I'll give you a bid and that would be it. You can insult me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm now. going to on this one, I'm afraid. Just... But nicely. Go on, then. Nicely. 40 quid for the pair. Because I'm buying one good one, really. Yeah. Come I would on. say £50 a pair. £50 pounds a pair, done. Right, fine, we'll have those. Now that he's made some deals with Patrick, Drew returns to the items he really wants, the Art Nouveau balustrades. So I'm at 200 quid for the pile. This sort of stuff is quality. OK. And, you know, you've got to bump it up a bit of a chunk mm. to take them home. Because, you know, he'll mm. barely fill up my Rolls Royce, will it, with fuel? <laughs> Two fifty for the pile. No, I thought you were going to be generous. I thought you no, could that's... take yeah. three, and you can take oh, it. Oh, Patrick, and you come can on. leave one behind as a sample. For what me you want to, to cry charge over. me more money and keep one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just throwing gonna... in the broken well, ones for happen. you. Okay, two seven five, including all the broken ones. Give me one to look at and drool over over the next. 20 years. Deal, 275 for the lot. And, I'll, and you can uh, can keep one. I'll pick you one out specially. <laughs> <That's very damaged. laughs> yeah, I'm going to check for the I'll broken you the most broken one. Despite his earlier reservations, Drew's got a good haul and not a piece of Bakelite in sight. And he's not finished yet. Now, I noticed these as we drove in, actually, Patrick. Iron garden chairs of this quality are very rare and command large prices. Drew could easily get £240 each for these French beauties. Are these something you'd, um, you'd part with? Well, I say no. I'd prefer not to sell them, because yeah. they're looking pretty here. Oh, really? They go with the rustic wall. If you were to sell them, how much would you want for them? Well, I think they were about 125 each. 125 so 250 for the pair. Don't take them. I persuade you not to take them, because I like them. No, I really like them. I really no, like don't. them an awful lot. No. They're very, very good. No, they're... they're just great looking, aren't they? Well, that's why they're there. Um. Yeah, 250, we'll have them. 
Damn. <laughs> I Funny. was just going to say 200. But never no, mind. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but something that looks that good and is so desirable to me, I want it. So that feeling may translate to somebody else. It's not just about profit, I mean. Although he's going to make a massive killing out of it, of course. Going to a Bakelite museum, which I'd have never have done normally, um, I was able to buy several items, all good, some expensive, but hey, I've got them, they're mine, and it's a good, good group of things for me to put into the shop. Patrick, it's been a pleasure. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was for me anyway. Yeah. No, I think it was very good. Yes, okay. I enjoyed it. After a good day out, it's a five-hour trip back to Drew's shop in North Wales to unload the van and see what the rest of the team think of their treasures. Um, loads of stuff. We went to a Bakelite museum because Julian wanted to go and I didn't want to go. Okay. But you, we, you enjoyed it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we loved it. Day, let's be honest. Ex dealer retired and opened this Bakelite museum. He was great. Got this pelmet off him. It's beaten up to hell, but I still think it's it has wonderful. a strong look. It's Lovely. wonderful. Gavin, if you could just make sure it's safe for people yep. to handle and that it can be, still be hung on the wall correctly. Aren't they lovely? Lovely. Nice Bye -bye. Gavin. Cheers. Pay top dollar for them. <laughs> just make sure they sit flat, give them a dust off, that's it. They just have such a good look to them. Look at that, look. Proper angle poise, floor standing lamp. Full polish, all the base, everything. Look at these. Nice, huh? Aren't they fab? So all I want you to do with these, Gavin, uh, jet wash. is clean them. Jet wash. I don't want to do any, any more than that to them. Gavin is one of Drew's longest serving staff members and is responsible for general restoration, cleaning and repairs. Restoration can be a delicate and tricky business, but sometimes a jet wash will do. Don't need much doing, so just give him a quick jet wash. Get all the dust and dirt and cobwebs and etc. off them and get them in the shop. Once Gavin has worked his magic, it's Mark's job to get it photographed and on the website as soon as possible. You can imagine that on a, a door, like a studded medieval door, if you've got a door this big. <laughs> the chairs sell in record time and don't even make it onto the website. Could these two chairs uh, go on one pallet? Yeah. We've paid for one pallet to go up to Scotland. OK. And they come in this afternoon. I don't know if they're going to fit. Made to measure. Mm -hmm. That's great. The delivery company are going to collect them. Could be now. Second only to Drew's love of salvage, it's his love of cars. And it's a happy day when he can combine the two. Accompanied by Julian, Drew is off to Doncaster to a man who's famous for racing and smashing up early 20th century cars and who may just have some car-related salvage for sale. I've loved daft old cars forever, really. Um, something with a bit more charm in it than a, than a modern car. Uh, and I like old cars where I can fix them myself and, and play with them. Yeah, that's this place. Look, you've got a GN badge on the front there. This would be Dougal, then. Fabulous. Brilliant. Dougal pulled up in his hot-rodded Fraser Nash. Today's going to be a, a brilliant day. Really looking forward to it. Wonderful. Hi, Dougal. Hi, Drew. How you doing? I'm all right. right. Good to meet you. Yeah. It's Jules. Hey, Jules. Yeah. Right. OK. Um, yeah. God, I love this. I know I'm, I'm here on business, but wow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's fantastic. Well, yeah. Did you build it or did you buy it part built or what did you do? I rebuild it three times every year. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Drew needs to be convinced, but Dougal has an interesting way of justifying his obsession with vintage cars. It makes so much more sense 
to, uh, to drive an old car than have a new car built. Um, every time they build a new car, a panda dies. Amusing, but is this someone Drew can do business with? This is a, this is a sort of... Oh, it's like a boot room, isn't it, really? With a kitchen and things like that. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Uh, so it's the old mill? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen something I like straight away as soon as I walked in. I don't know. It's, it's the, um, the curtain pole. This complete set of pole, rings and finials, probably from the Victorian era, could fetch as much as £400. Yeah, I like that as well. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it's just, I just thought, well, you're not using it. I mean, my wife does hang things like that off it all the time, so... What about, um... 180 quid? I, I'd rather have that hanging on the wall than 180 quid. Yeah? Mm, I would. Mm. Thank you all the same. He wanted to buy it because it's a really nice piece of kit. I want to keep it because it's a really nice piece of kit. If that, that was a pretty definite no, wasn't it? That was a definite no. That was a definite no. Uh, it's not a good start for me. I mean, I'm enjoying my day here and to meet somebody new, good connection when I need parts for my cars, but I need to make money. Oh, how about... That's not actually for sale. That's an old tongue press. A what? It's for pressing tongues. Cow tongues? Yeah. So you put that... Put your tongue in there. And then, and then pop that on the top to press the tongues. And then, you could, of course, you could put whatever weight on top of that you wanted. Ah, I see. <coughs> well, that's not for sale either. No, but it's lovely, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's great. I'm just showing off with it. Okay. <laughs> He's a collector. He really doesn't want to sell anything. He's just really enjoying showing me his stuff. And I'm really enjoying looking at it. But we'd like to do some business. Have you got that? What's that? That's my wife's Triumph, 1914. Not for sale. Really lovely, that is. We've also got funky not little for, not kids. Not for sale. Kids drop handlebar racing no, bike. No. That's not for sale because that's uh, baby stands. Okay. Uh, Nor's that one. Okay. Uh, not for sale. No, not for not sale. sale. Definitely okay. not. Particularly bad motorbike. You're not really selling that to me, are you? No, it's not my best pitch. No. Uh, I don't really have a great deal for sale here. Um, you know, a lot of the things in this house are my knickknacks collection. Things that I've nicked and things that I've knackered. Uh, that I've got them from wherever because I like them, and uh, so there isn't a great deal for sale. As the time passes, it looks increasingly like Dougal has nothing of interest to Drew, who may be going home empty-handed. Oh, Coracle, distinctly second-hand. Never been raced or rallied. Bloody hell. <laughs> if, you can, if you can get from this side of the pond to the other in that, I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think it's seaworthy anymore. Yeah, I think it's not, not built for water. The things that are for sale, the things I'd happily get rid of, uh, I'd happily get rid of them for the same reason he wouldn't want to buy them. It's all about quality yeah. and condition with yeah. these things. And, but the quality of the initial make, and it's been overpainted. How about this hammer? It's fantastic, isn't it? I don't know, I've got to tell you, I'm not going to sell it. I just love it, because it's a proper... <laughs> it's a boy's tool, isn't it? A lovely steps. Hammer. Yeah, they're the old, These are the old mill wheels from the building. The old millstones, they'd be what they ground the corn with. Yeah, they're fab, aren't they? Yeah, great things. That's good luck. That's recycling. It is, on a grand scale. It's yeah. very good. Yeah, I've got a manky old 2CV. This okay. used to be my cousin's. He's called Mickey. Yeah. And he uses a camper van, so he called his Mickey Bago. <laughs> As in a Winnebago, but possibly not quite a chic. And it's now my wife's potting shed. Oh, it's quite cool. Eventually, Drew's perseverance pays off, and he spots something attractive and French. Not the 2CV, but some chairs. They, they're Funky very... little kids' chairs. Yeah, they're very much up my street. Kind of... Drew could easily get £120 for these from his interior design or shop fitting customers. Now he has to do a deal with self styled joker Dougal. They're very, very small, aren't they? These are toddler size, aren't yeah. they? Almost. Yeah. yeah. OK, well, what do you want for these? I do like them. Great oh, colour. Yeah. Nice and beaten up. Yeah, they're great. Five quid each, 30 quid for the four. <laughs> God, you're hilarious today, aren't you? 50s and French by the looks of them. Can't see any maker's marks or anything on them, but they've definitely got that feel about them. No hallmarks on them. Yeah. So we're talking... So, we're, so where, what did you say, 15? <laughs> I'm sure that's what he said, yeah, yeah. 20 quid for four chairs. Got 20 quid for four chairs. For teeny weeny little chairs, yeah. like that. Yeah. That you've left in the garden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, where else do you get pattern from? Mm, true, true. Got yeah, lived okay. In 20 quid, we'll have those. Sold. Lovely, thank you. Not going to take up a lot of room in the van, are they? 
It's stunning place. It's absolutely beautiful. But unfortunately, I can't buy much, can I? No, well, I sort of like it all. Yeah, OK. 20 <laughs> quid's worth of chairs. 20 quid's worth of chairs, yeah, that's oh, it. Right, okay. Have you got 20 okay. quid, then? Well, have you got 20 quid? <laughs> you owe me 20 quid. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a tenner. <laughs> See how this is can probably, <laughs> We can probably <laughs> rustle up a tenner from the <laughs> ashtray in the van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably, yeah. Quack, quack, quack. Quack, quack. Today, financially, was a loss. We've bought one little thing for £20. It's my job to salvage things, to hunt around and find things. That's what I do. I don't do anything else. If I'm not buying stuff, I'm not making any money. Well, look, we're going to get going. It's been a pleasure. Great stuff. All right, Thank no, you. it's been a pleasure. Well, I've enjoyed seeing Drew. Uh, he's, a, he's a similar character to myself in that he likes sort of silly old impractical things that a lot of people are lost interest in. I think we could probably have a few laughs over a pint any time, really. Well, he was a nice fella. <laughs> You're being very tame with that one. Hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. He was, he was, he was great, wasn't he? Couldn't give a toss. Absolutely Sodium. didn't give a damn. Living his life by Love his it. own rules. Yes. Very good. But slightly disappointing we didn't find anything. Four chairs. Some days, that's how it goes. The day may be about to turn around. Mark has called with a lead. He's received an email from Amanda Sinclair, who's desperate to clear some of her dad's workshop and hopefully make a few quid selling off some antique garden ornaments. So it's off to Sussex for Drew and Julian. I love it when Mark calls me on the road, and he's clearly excited he's running at a million miles an hour. He says that he's found a property that has got period garden urns and garden items Antique ones, I'm there. I absolutely love buying them. So if they're there and they're real, I'm buying them. So where are we going today? See a girl called Amanda. Amanda Sinclair. Amanda Sinclair, she's an interior designer. Dad makes furniture, but also along the way he's sort of into old bits and pieces. The workshop is an absolute tip. Um, <laughs> and one of the major reasons for calling Drew was to see if we can tidy up a bit. Yeah, Amanda. Hi, Hello. Yeah. Hi, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, everything all right getting here? Yeah, no problem. Straight yeah. in. Great. It's Jules. Hi, Julie. Hiya. Hi, Amanda. Um, we got your email. Fantastic. Uh, I've only seen a couple of images. Yeah. Um, uh, of what you've got, and they seem to be garden items. Yeah, that's right. But... Dad's got some old garden furniture um, that's been hanging around for ages, the planters' pedestals, that type of thing, and I thought Drew might be interested in them. Right, they're just over here. All right. So. Right. Oh, I see. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> but Drew has some bad news for Amanda. Yeah, they're uh, they're all they're all modern ones. Mm, they're a bit... sort of they've got the look, but they just haven't got the age. 30, 40 years old, maybe. Maybe some of them probably not that old. Yeah, Period pieces is what yeah. I'm really after. No, That's no. for sure. Somebody will want them. Just, just not me, I'm afraid. I feel like I've wasted your time now. Thank you so much, though. It happens. Don't worry. Sometimes we can pass without knowing a bit of duff information onto Drew. He finds it quite annoying, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. It's a long way to come for nothing. And Drew employs the salvage hunter golden rule. Don't just look at the things the seller thinks you want. Look everywhere. As you can see... It's working in progress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, working environment, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. There's bits and pieces everywhere. Oh, this is the office? Yeah. Oh, I see. Right, OK. Yeah. Yeah, he's a messy pup, your dad, isn't he? Yeah. Blimey. He sort of just chucks things wherever they land. <laughs> yeah. Really? You know, you've got to... That's his breakfast. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's the base of a very big candlestick. Would have been a pair, probably, ecclesiastical looking at them. <laughs> You haven't got the rest of these? Uh, not as far as I know. <sighs> Ganesh? Yeah, could be. So is it, yeah? It's all yeah. broken. It is Ganesh, yeah. You see that? That's it. Yeah. You see a lot of these. I know that upper mind in gods, but I didn't no, know. No, nor me. The railway line outside's gorgeous, isn't it? What is it? It's the Blue Bear Railway. Very, very famous. It's not a Pullman carriage. Absolutely. They do food and afternoon teas and fish and chip parties. 
That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fish and chip on the Pullman. Absolutely. OK, yeah, no, nothing in here for us. I just had these in the drawer that I put away. Oh, that one's a nice one. Do you have the keeper? No. Mm, shame. Right, so you just want to keep looking. Yeah, see please. See if you can find any goodies. Drew searches high and low and then hits gold. Well, brass. Oh, these are the brass plates. Oh, quite nice, aren't they? These brass finger plates or push plates, people call them. Yeah, they come from a big house um, in Copthorne, which is about 25 minutes away from here. Mm. Um, so the house was apparently owned by Lord Dowling um, okay. in Sussex. Yeah. And the house was actually knocked down, and my father actually redeveloped the site. But he kept all the bits and pieces from the old house. OK. And these are them. They're stylistically, they're quite nice. They've yeah. got a little registration mark on oh, there right, as yeah. well. See it? Mm. Yeah. Mm. English from the 20s. Mm -hmm. How many of those have we got to? So this would be either side of the door. Right, yeah. So have that one on yep. the door. Yeah. That one on the other side of the door. Mm -hmm. Must be nine. 12. 12. Oh, good news. Quite like these. When it comes to door furniture, multiples of two work best. Once cleaned up, these early 20th century examples could fetch £10 each. OK. Right. Did you say there was a loft space? Yep, just behind you. Right. Up through there. Attics are often salvage hunter gold, as they are places that people put Down. things and forget about them. <laughs> uh, these are interesting, these columns you've got up here. Right, OK. Six of them. Drew has found a set of six <laughs> matching wooden columns. Even numbers are always better for salvage, and condition is key. There's nothing else I can see up there right, at all, okay. just loads of old tools. Mm -hmm. These are good, I like these. Where did these come from, do you know? Um, Stratford upon Avon. Dad was doing his normal walking around, looking to see what he could find. Yeah. And he found these from the RSC Theatre. Don't imagine they're from the building, they were probably used on a No, probably set, a set or something I'd like say. that. Yeah. yeah. This is exactly the kind of provenance that can add value to an item. These columns could sell for £60 each. I'd be interested in those, right, for sure. Right, OK. okay. Unfortunately for Drew, it's Amanda's father who needs to be convinced to sell. Yeah, hi. Hi, Dad, it's me. Um, yeah, I've just been here with um, Drew and he's just been looking at some stuff. Um, you know the finger plates from the old house? See what she says. And also all the, um, the columns from that place in Stratford where you and Mum went. So have you got any idea of price or anything? Right. Hi. Oh, hello. Hey. Well, I spoke to his dad. What's he say? Yeah, he's happy to go ahead. OK. What's we can you... get a price. And these? And the plates. They're not cast brass, they're just sheet. OK. So we're going to have to get the paint off. £3 each. £3 each. Well, that's it. That's exactly what we were just yeah. saying. We need to pay a few pounds each for yeah. these. Yeah. Um, I think we're for the columns. The dowels. Yeah. In these have snapped. Yeah. They just came as they were. Yeah, you know, he didn't strip the no, paint off strip. them. No, 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 mm. no. It's a shame that they've, they've done that. Sometimes when you strip hardwoods like this, they'll crack. Mm. About 150? Six for 150, OK. Yep. That's a great price. Right, OK. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. Damn, should have gone higher. Oh, uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, it was worth me coming. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I've cleared a bit of your dad's junk. Yeah, a um, little bit. Not... <laughs> <laughs> what started as a search for antique garden ornaments has resulted in a find of 1920s door furniture and a set of columns from the Royal Shakespeare Company. Proof again that when it comes to salvage hunting, Drew never knows what he'll find until he gets there. Anyway. Thank you oh, very much indeed. No, thank to you. Meet you. No, and you. Back at base and more jobs for the team. We went to see a girl called Amanda. Do you remember that email you sent, Mark? Oh yeah. You said, uh, I didn't. I'd, I went in there blind. I hadn't seen anything. All the garden stuff she mentioned was all new. Yeah. None of it was any good. But she did have. I was going to say these are nice. Aren't they? Six of these. And a father bought them, and they're from the Royal Shakespeare Company. They were used there as set dressing. I'm assuming. Um, what do you think? Yeah, great. Lovely, aren't they? Mm. So strapped from an Avon. So all I want you to do is just go over them with a clear wax. Right, what else do we get from her? Oh, yeah, these. Thanks. Oh. 
A stack of them, all matching. Huge wad of them. Yeah, all matching finger plates. Twenty British Arts and Craftsy. All matching. All matching. They sell well as is. No, they need you to give. There you go. You, that's your next job now. Then for saying that. There you oh, go. I got to do that. <laughs> that one. Full polish on those, please, Gavin. And straighten them out, flatten them. Yeah. But it's been a bad few days, and the purchases from Amanda won't keep them busy for long. When you're not finding anything, it's the worst. You think, I'm losing my touch, uh, what am I doing, I need to get a real job, you know, all these different things. And then you find that other thing and I'm off. I'm off again, I'm like, brilliant. But Drew's fortunes may be about to change. He's just got another call that has made him put any thoughts of a nine-to-five job to one side. It's a place he's been trying to get into for years, it's off to Derbyshire to meet a bona fide lord with stuff to sell. Music to Drew's ears. So we're off to see Sir Richard Fitzherbert. Quite a handle. But he's rang us, so I think it's sort of game on straight away. There's no messing about whether we need to... Is that for sale? Is this for sale? And he has loads of old furniture he wants to get rid of. Uh, my name's Sir Richard Fitzherbert, and I live at Tissington Hall, and this is our family home for 402 years, and I've been here 22. I think it's uh, essential that sometimes country houses reinvent themselves and occasionally have a big clear-out, but there's a lot of clutter in this house, and it's my responsibility to, to maintain the house, and if I could achieve a few quid, uh, you know, to do up a window or another room uh, through selling some clutter, then let's do it. But the scent of blue blood may be giving this salvage hunter ideas above his station. This is where we need to be all the time, in these beautiful old halls. Spend far too much time in scrapyards. Oh, look, it's a whole village. It's a hall with a village. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is nice, isn't it? On your best behaviour. Absolutely. No spitting, no swearing. Put my fart on. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Hi. Hi, good morning. Hello. Sir Richard? Hello, yes, Sir Richard Great. Fitzherbert. What we've got for sale are the things really in the storeroom, so in the sheds, down in the cellar and up in the turret room at the top of the house. Wow, fabulous hallway. Oh, God, that's gorgeous. Well, this is the main hall of the house, the uh, 17th century part of the house. The house was built in 1609. Great front chest. Yeah. That's a drawer. Yeah. Someone's left there. Do you want a hand? <laughs> it was in my aunt's house, and I'd moved it from her house. It always rattled. I found these drawers by fiddling with it one day, and in these drawers there were jewels and necklaces and things like that she'd hidden. Anyway, I got so excited, I got three younger sisters. I rang them up, they're in London. They said, oh, we'll come up and get them. And that was the last I heard Yeah, of I was going to say, you never yeah. saw them again. <laughs> exactly. I did ask my sister about the earrings, and she said, oh, Richard, they weren't your colour. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go up this way, and up these stairs to the turret room. We have a turret room at the south end of the house, at the top of the stairs. I'd love to make that my own sort of little study, but there is a lot of clutter in there, and hopefully we can find something in there for Drew. Music to Drew's ears. To a turret room turret in a country room. pile that needs to be cleared out. Doesn't get much better than this. Is this one of the oldest bits of the house, is it? Yeah, this is part of the oldest bit. So you've got, the again, the 17th century flies um, and things like that. These are rather marvellous. Yes, yeah, so a light should be weighted. You've got a weight in there, so there you go. Drop lamps are ceiling-mounted lamps that can be adjusted in height. Rewired and restored, this late 19th or early 20th century version could sell for around £480. The drop lamp, when we rewired the house in 1990, a lot of these drop lamps were taken out because they were deemed dangerous for the electrics in the house. The, the house had not been rewired for 40 years, so we took some of these out. I'd forgotten that I'd uh, got a drop lamp like that, which is a rather nice piece. You pull this up and down, the counterweight moves it up and down, and so if you move it so there, it stops. So there it stops. Everything's here, nothing's missing, and uh, it's not been messed around with. So, ideal for us. What do you think? What do you reckon for that one? <sighs> Couple of hundred. The max for that one, max, 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 would be 
I'd really like to pay 80 quid, but I'd probably push it to 100, but no more. That's for sure. OK, it's doing nothing here. Yeah. Excellent. Now we'll have that. To get anything for that, I was thrilled of. I could easily have thrown it out 20 years ago. With the ice broken, the next stage is to get Sir Richard to open the estate sheds, Drew's preferred hunting ground. We store a lot of clutter in here, as you can see. At the back of the shed, Drew spots a very large kitchen table that has definitely seen better days. Then, Apparently, it's... this is a rather good table. Where's, where's, where's this from? The table in the uh, the shed outside, I think, was a was a servant's table at some at uh, some stage, probably used in one of the kitchens. And I believe when the house was uh, readdressed and restructured in 1900, that that table probably came out uh, of the house then, 1900, 1910 and has been in that shed certainly since I've ever known it, the last 22 years. Great big chunk missing out the corner here, oh. where somebody's just hacked into it and cut the end off, cut a corner off. Two plank top, that's really good. Let me just get down and have a better look at this side. Is this something that's for sale? Yep. Oh, that's the ghost. Have you got a ghost? We have corresponded with some of my great uncles, I believe. One particular evening is very memorable. It was uh, one in the morning, and we went into a particular room, my old study, and uh, ten of us clasped hands all around. I didn't know the other nine at all. They didn't know anyone, and we went... We had to be quiet. So we were quiet. We put our hands together, went in a ring, and uh, somebody said, is there anybody out there? And then the floor creaked. Was that you? Was that you? Was that you? No. It was the floor creaked. And so somebody rather brashly said, is there someone there? The floor creaked. Did you hear it just then? And then this conversation developed on a sort of yes, no. Are you William? Floor creaked. Are you George? Nothing. And we worked out that it was one of the Sir Williams that lived here in the, in the 18th century. Right. Skeptical. Okay. I think we'll get back in the van. <laughs> <laughs> At the risk of upsetting the spirits, Drew and Julian hoist the table outside to take a closer look. Ah, oh, it's soaked in oil. Somebody's been re rebuilding engines on it by the looks of it. The Qataris pay a lot of money for that sort of thing, <laughs> won't they? <laughs> drain the table out. There's at least a litre in there, isn't there? That's uh, right. Well, that's worth it. Oh, of course, at today's price, it's, it's about gosh. 15 quid in there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. The oil and the damage don't deter Drew. He knows that after restoration, this 10-foot example could fetch around £1,800. How much? I mean, I'm not using it. It's pretty sturdy. I mean, I've sold similar ones, not quite as in good condition, for, uh, you know, 500 quid. Um, 500 is going to be too much. Well, I was thinking going. more cheekily, mm -hmm. 200 quid. 200 quid. Yeah, when I first saw it, that's my... So we're a bit apart. Right, OK, we are a little bit on that, really. Well, I'd have to think about that. I'd have to think about that. Um, what about 300? 300, with that very good green on it. That's a state green, you know. That's Hollybush green. You can have that, though. I can have, you that, can have back, that. If you can, can get I? that off, you can have it. All yours free. Well, <laughs> I suppose I'll carry it down to 400. 400. Still seems a little bit heavy. It is heavy. Yeah, well, it's not. <laughs> uh, 380. We'll have a deal on it. Close right. enough? Thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. The £380 I got for the table, I think, is, is very fair. In fact, I'm probably very pleased with it. 500 was probably a little naughty of me to try that on with Drew. Yeah, I paid £380 for the table, which looks like a hill of money for a broken, oil-soaked, cut-up, knackered work table out of a kitchen. What I'm looking at is I've got a 10-foot, two-plank pine table with a nice history that, once restored, will command a lot of money uh, because it's very much in vogue. But Drew's not finished yet. Sir Richard has one last place to take him. I think Drew might be able to find something in the cellar. This it's become the receptacle of lots of junk. Mind your steps as you come down this stairway. You can hold on to the left. We're deep, aren't we, down here? It's, it's deep down here, oh, yeah. And there's that door, and I'll turn the lights on. And this is my glory hole. Ah. My old... Uh, I'll give you that. Cellar. So, lots of clatter in here. 
More wine. Yeah. More wine that was the port section. That's the port. I've, I've had a bit of a go at that. You've got these lovely old bin numbers everywhere. Yeah, and there's the odd... Is that the Armagnac one or Cognac? Yeah. I mean, in the old days, the, these, these would have held a pipe of port each or a pipe of Armagnac, so you'd have had 144 bottles of... Your merchant would have given you 144 bottles of claret, of burgundy, of Armagnac, of cognac. And that's called a pipe. A pipe. That yeah. quantity is a pipe. 112 cases of 12. Ah, OK. And in the cellar, something Drew can never have enough of. Old country house chairs. I've got a bit of a fetish for old country house armchairs. Right, I OK. I do tend to buy them weekly. That's a beauty. Yeah, what do you think they are? They said 19th century. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Then you've got this one here. But yeah, these are all all 19th century. This one's got a broken arm, unfortunately. OK, so are these things... Are these for sale, these? Uh, possibly, yeah. Drew never passes up a decent old armchair. Even before reupholstery, he can sell these for up to £300 each. What price-wise? Um, I'd average them out at 300 quid each, 900 quid for the three. Um, I'd probably go to 450 for the three. No, that, I think that's me done. 450. That's 450. Thank you. Lovely. Right. To clear it out, £450 I was very well pleased with. I hope they find a good home. They need a new life. It's what I'm always looking for. It's quality. Uh, quality, quality, quality sells. That's why I come to these houses. They didn't buy junk. That's why I like to come here. And that's what I'm always looking for. Chairs of that size, I've never had a problem selling them, whether back into sort of the interior design trade generally or back into big old country houses as well. There's an awful lot of them around. All right. All right. Tissington Hall has been great for us today. Um, I've never been here before. It's stunning. Uh, meeting Sir Richard was fun. He's, he's, he's a laugh, to be honest with you. We got on well, I think. Um, and I've bought well. I've bought a few items, and they've all got perfect country house provenance. I was thrilled that Drew came today. I've learned a lot from today, and I've got a few quid in my pocket as well, so we'll be going to the pub later. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, I'll ask him to come again. I've also got a few mates who've got a few houses as well, and he might like to visit them. OK, we're done. Done. Finished. Loaded. OK. Thanks Thank you so much. much. OK, Thank good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. See you again. Thanks for the trip around the house as well. My really pleasure. enjoyed it. See you okay. soon. Bye-bye. On the ride back, Drew tells Julian just how much he loves old armchairs. I love armchairs. I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed with them. Really, really loves old armchairs. I actually don't know how many I've got in stock at the moment. A lot. 20? 20. 20 country house knackered armchairs. <laughs> yeah, knackered armchairs. I'll keep buying them. Back at base, the armchair love fest continues. Hello. How are you doing? I can see some chairs. We couldn't take you. Surprise, surprise, I bought loads of chairs. Drew's wife, Rebecca, is used to upholstered rivals and is unfazed. You can't go wrong with bums on seats. No. Um, it's the, uh, but the frame is, is good and the shape underneath this is great. You can see underneath this... Has it got all its casters? Everything's on there. Oh, good. But the arm's broken. But what a super shape. Look at the shape. Isn't it great? I'll just take, take the back there. Look at this. This is a beauty. Let's spin it round. Look at that. What a super chair. Isn't that just wonderful? Is it me or have I just got too much of a thing for chairs? Um... That's a yes, then. Three chairs, £450 pounds okay. for the three. But don't you think that's great? It is. You, you guys not not as no, enamoured with it as me? No, I am. It's just Obviously, it seems better days. To a lot of people's eyes, they just look like a load of old sofas that some people would say should be skipped. But underneath all that is the frames are beautiful. They're Victorian. Again, Drew's eye. He spotted those chairs, the turned legs, the casters. Um, so they're great. The giant oil-soaked table is more of a hit with the team. What do you think of that? Well, ignore, yeah. ignore the extremely filthy, oily condition, which the oil is an issue. Yeah. Well, that's two planks. <coughs> two plank top. Two plank top, yeah. yeah. Look at that. One plank, look at that. Lovely. Wow. Most people wouldn't have even spotted it. It was... It's a real state, a real state. But um, great proportions, as Drew would say, 
um, trust me, <laughs> with a lot of restoration, that will be back to a very, very good standard. It will be good. Salvage hunting is a tricky business, and despite some doubts, Drew's persistence has paid off, and he lives to hunt another day. I have to rely very much on my own instincts. Uh, I have to know that what comes off the back of the van is going to sell. The lads look at me sometimes when I bring in an oil-stained table or a little kiddie's chair like this or, you know, a knackered old armchair. It's not only my livelihood, it's their livelihood. We need to make sure we can sell this stuff, so, and it's a big responsibility. When you take a little chair like this out of context now, you see, you take it out of the garden and just put it down and go, look, it's a funky, cool item. So sometimes just taking those pieces away from a normal environment, you expect to see them, and showing them for what they are, which is really very simply and beautifully designed little piece of furniture. This is the wonderful and amazingly good quality rise and fall lamp we found at Tissington. Um, it's now working. Ollie did a lovely job rewiring it and getting it to work correctly and balance properly, which is really, really hard. But now you can just hold that stops perfectly any way you like. These are some of the finger plates we bought from Amanda Sinclair, again, which are just um, Wonderful now they've come up, they've had a polish. I mean, they've been handled, but uh, we've sold the larger ones and we've sold the columns that we got from Amanda, um, but we've got these smaller finger plates come through. So exactly what I like about the job, you know, just taking something like that, completely usable, but also authentic. So this table now, this is the one we got from the garage at Tissington. I did take a bit of a flyer on this one, to be honest with you, because that oil was really deep in it. But Alex and Gavin between them have done a super job. And you can really see now that why I was really fancied it. The two plank top just makes a great look to the table. Experience has taught me that you always keep going because it literally can be in the next five minutes or tomorrow or the day after, you'll find something great and we can make some money and we get the excitement and we get the rush and we get the interest and we get the new thing through the shop. So you just keep going and think, well, tomorrow, I'll find a shed full of stuff. Drew's business is built on his ability to unearth unique one-off pieces. Crack on. We're, we're going, Jules. Get going. That means hunting in places no one else would think of going. Accompanied by sidekick Julian, Drew's off to Stafford to meet a man who specialises in decommissioning planes, helicopters and weapons. This business, from what I've seen of it, and uh, the brief email we had from them, they just, I said, you know, what have you got? And the listing of stuff that they had was breathtaking. My name's Ian Dodds. Uh, this is Air and Ground Aviation. Uh, this particular division of Air and Ground Aviation is called VWIMNI. It's uh, part of the disposal contract for the Ministry of Defence in the United Kingdom for the sale of surplus aircraft parts, land vehicle parts, and associated material. Spitfire. Hi there. Hi. How are you doing? All right. Ian? Yes? Hi, Drew. Hi, Drew. Pleased to meet you. All you all right? right? Hi, Julian. Hi, Julian. You all right? Welcome to Air and Ground. Thank you. I'm going to come in and uh, we'll get signed up. OK, great. So, here we go. Wow, God, it's huge. Everything in here is for sale. It's extremely rare for a dealer like Drew to get access to ex-Ministry of Defence items like this, so he needs to make the most of the opportunity. But knowing where to start is a challenge. Wow, well, what's these? Um, they're actually uh, tail rotor blades off the Westland Lynx helicopter. Uh, these would actually be demilitarised before we'd sold them. We'd drill a hole through them so they could never be used on an aircraft again. Sure. We'd probably be selling those around the 40 to £50 pound mark, uh, as they are, as is condition. The rotor blades don't really do it for Drew, and with over 150,000 square feet of warehouse, he'll have to focus and work fast if he's going to cover the whole place in a day. What's that? I have absolutely no idea. Look at these cases, the cases alone are just beautiful. Yeah, what we do with a lot of equipment is we'll take the original component out of it. That yeah. is actually a piece of peculiar test equipment. Scrap value is probably only worth about £5, uh, if not less than that, although it is clean sort of stainless steel and alley. 
but we're normally selling these from anything from 50 to 150 pounds each. Wow, look at this. This is like... This is how you want our... Look at that. This is what I want. This is what yeah. our place should be like. This up and down and all those through there. I was just directing planes then. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people buy these for converting for artefacts and... Yeah, they're good, aren't they? They're great looking. Um, but something like that, we'd normally sell those between 150 to 250 pounds, depending on the condition and whether they're serviceable or not. Per seat? Per seat. Per seat. OK. Drew knows his interior design clients will pay around 250 pounds each for these 1960s seats. Hmm. Yes, they're good. His strategy is to buy a few smaller pieces first, in the hope that Ian will give him more favourable terms on the big items. These are quite good. This thing? Trolleys, yes. We've been using these as uh, tool cases. Can you imagine all your tools laid out there? Or if you're into discos or you're a musician and lighting rigs, I don't know. It's nuts just trying to get your head around it. We've been selling these up to sort of 250, 400 pounds, one or two we've sold very good. And we've put some more in the lot. No, it's great. I think I need a bigger van. Yeah, and there are... It does look like a big sunbed. And you can diverse. <laughs> yes, it does, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> These are great containers, aren't they? Just ditch all that lot. Yeah. I mean, you look at the, the type of test equipment and computers that are in there, it's so old. So you could equip a small army. Wales are thinking of having a bit of an uprising. <laughs> you spend about 500 quid here, well, you're in trouble. Can you say? <laughs> he's wearing it, he's bought it. Yeah, that's nobody else is going to want to put the gob in there now, are they? You like that, don't you? Yeah, I don't know. You're right. In there. No. There's only one issue with wearing it. You can't breathe. And you look like a massive pervert in it as well. Does that light up your life? Yeah, they do. <laughs> These lights will be very desirable to restaurant designers and could easily fetch £20 per piece. Runway Same lamps. sort of thing, runway lamp. £100 for the pallet. Well, it'd be silly not to buy those, I think it, it? To be honest, I think it'd be insulting if we didn't. Yeah. OK, we'll take this pallet. £100? Lovely. Nice. Yeah, brilliant. Here's uh, another selection of runway lighting. They look fantastic in a restaurant, in your bedroom. In your bedroom? Yeah. No, no. Uh, I'm just, yeah, brothel. Stop. <laughs> Go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so does this go over the top of it? How does that work? Actually, I'm not 100% certain. It's all part of runway right lighting. I think this is actually the lens that goes over the lighting in the ground, so aircraft can run over it. It's very, very thick, <laughs> won't break. I'll tell you what, my dog, dog bowl. You'd yeah. love that. Oh, it's got to be Enzo. worth 50 pounds for an indestructible yeah. dog bowl, hasn't it? It would Enzo. need to be with Enzo. <laughs> These are very cool. I like those a lot. They're like some sort of retro steampunk library ladder, aren't they? Imagine them all polished up, or even left like that. I love these red rivets on there. These are currently off the C-130s we're refurbishing, but uh, these are available for sale. How many did you want, both, or just Yeah, one? how much for the pair? Uh, I would say about £50 a piece, so £200, and I, I wouldn't sell them for less. £50 a piece, £200? It's massive, but... We've got four in total, Oh, I sorry. see. Oh. All right, OK. Yeah. Steampunk is a style based on the Victorian vision of futuristic technology, like H.G. Wells' Time Machine. It's very popular with interior designers right now, who would pay up to £140 each for industrial functional pieces like these. Well, if I took all four, £150? Like I say. £200, fixed price. No, that's a bargain. If, if I told you how much just that piece there is worth, 150 £50. £50 for one of those? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, having them. Lovely, thank you. Right, great, you'll have to get demilitarising. Super. <laughs> so far, Drew has found some unusual pieces of salvage, but everywhere he goes, he looks for one special piece that will amaze his customers. And it looks like he's just found it. I want those. I really, really want those. We don't actually have a customer for the propellers at the moment, so um, if it's something that you'd be interested in, we'd be quite happy to take these propellers off the engines. They've got that percentage that just sets them apart from everything else. You can go and buy plane propellers. You can. You know, they're not uncommon. You can buy all of this stuff, but you can't buy any of those. But if you wanted to buy the complete prop assemblies... Uh... What, the whole thing, so it comes with this? Comes with, with that complete unit. So that whole unit. So you're actually talking from this split ring forward. Uh, we don't have any stands for it, so we'd literally take them off and put them on a pallet. They are pretty big, as you can see. Yeah. But uh, aluminium. Yeah. How much? 
we'd normally sell something like that at about £400 for a prop. For the whole thing? For the whole thing. Aviation pieces like these are very decorative and could sell for up to £750 each. Uh, if you want to take both of them, uh, there's a deal to be done. We've got a customer for the engines. They don't want the props, so... These are very the rare. thing, I think, yeah. is quite interesting. Rare in a plain way, but I'm, I'll be selling it as a decorative item. So if I was going to buy a pair, I'd be thinking... 400 quid for the pair is probably more where I'd want to be, and I'd take both. What about halfway, £600 for the two? I can't, I can't, I just can't do it. That's a, sort of, every time I look at something like this, a figure will always pop into my head. As soon as I'm interested in something, I think, what would I want to pay? I mean, both of them off with the nose cones. I'd go to five, but I wouldn't pay any more. Okay. £500. £500? Job done. Excellent. There you go. Bidding £500 for the pair. Got them. Deal. Deal of the week. Fantastic. Now I've got the two best pieces of aviation wall art out there. How cool are they? They're brilliant. Now it's time to see if Drew's strategy pays off, and it's back to the chairs to see if he can get Ian to accept a lower bid. These chairs that we've mentioned... This is the sort of thing you could buy today if you could afford to buy them. <laughs> I want them. I can afford it, but it's about spending the money in the right way. You know that. Um... And you're asking how much each? We normally sell these for £150 each. But I'm buying quite a lot of things now, aren't I? And I'm definitely going to be back. I mean, you've so far sold me two massive propellers and 400 lamps, so, you know, I'm not messing about. With these, I'd really like to pay for four, 300 quid. Wonderful. Thank you. Brilliant. Excellent. They're yeah. just super things. There you go, Drew. I think you've just about seen everything we've got. Um, so when would you like to take delivery of your first aircraft? Yeah, sure. If we can get it on the van, we'll buy one. Slight issue. <laughs> get the van in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we put a few uh, vans in it. But look, thanks for showing me. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, Thank you so much. An honour and a pleasure to meet you. Great. Whilst the top gun of the salvage world is enjoying himself in Stafford, wife Rebecca and sales manager Mark are holding the fort back in North Wales. Drew's on a pretty long mission this week. Hopefully, if it all goes well, he should be coming back with a lot of lovely items, which means here we're going to have to get all the backlog sorted out, get the sales moving, move the items out, ready for his return. We're trying to work out the price per linear metre of uh, this flooring. We bought it in square metres and um, our customers are asking it for in linear metres. That doesn't matter too much, does it? If you're laying a floor? Oh, if you want Pacific? Yeah. Pacific? Is that the right word? It's a Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Pacific. <laughs> I, haven't had a drink. I haven't had a drink yet. I've got a sort of random selection of five and three quarters to six and a quarter, but it's fine. It'll be all right. I think I'll leave the flooring to Julian. Come back, Julian! We've never asked for Julian to come back, have we? That's a first. That's is a first! <laughs> <laughs> but Julian is 200 miles away, driving from Stafford to a manor house in Greenham in Somerset. Big country houses are perfect hunting ground for Drew, as they usually have good quality furniture lying around in sheds and outbuildings. This was Mark um, sending out flyers, wasn't it, that got us this next one? Yeah, they came back to him and um, he sort of decided to book it in because we were going to be close. What's the place called? Uh, Coffee Manor. I've lived here for 18 years and we run it as a business. According to Christopher Hussey, writing um, in the 1920s for Country Life, described Cotty as the finest example of a small medieval manor left in the kingdom today. I'm not sure about it, to be honest, because they're saying they've just got the odd bit to sell, but um, 
they've been doing antique fairs down here for a while as well. So every trader and his man. And every, so everybody's been through the place. Everybody's been through the place. So I'm hoping it's not a total bust. They seem to make everything beautiful down here. Yeah. Whoa, look at this place. <laughs> hi, I'm Drew. Mary Ann Rock. Hi. Nice Hello. to meet you. Hello. This is my daughter, Charlie, Hello. Charlie Campbell. Hi. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah. Uh, it's Jules. Just come along with me. Julian. Oh. How are you? Hello. 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 Good to meet you. Hello. Fantastic place you've got here. It, all this is uh, 1480. It's almost as it was when it was built, mm. so they say. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's absolutely yeah. lovely, I'll take it. It's everything. I think the British Country House style has got so many things about it. It's lived in, and it's been lived in and lived in and lived in, and they evolve, but they never really change, and they get a bit crumbly and a bit saggy when they're covered in ivy, and you can't not be taken in. Like, you really can't not be. Mary Ann gives Drew and Julian the guided tour of the house, and it's full of unique and beautiful things. Was this the chapel? Um, no, it was where, um, in medieval times, where all the staff would have slept. slept. Oh. Oh, that's a nice one, isn't it? Do you actually want to sell it, Mum? Do you, really, do you want to sell it? What? I don't know anything about them, and I can't even remember how long I've had them. That's the These are, one, isn't the, it? Yeah. These are the same as the ones I had. I okay. had the paper tags on them. Yes. Which I don't know if they were real, but it did look the part anyway. Yes. Do you want to sell it? Yeah. Can I think about it for a minute? Yeah, sure. Is sure. That we'll all come right? back to it, yeah. What about that? The what? Cupboard. No, that cupboard mm. I keep that's not old. No, I keep not my old, stuff no. In it. Not for me. <laughs> Charlie Charlie would sell you absolutely everything. She used to sell anything, won't she? Yes. That door's quite nice. <laughs> the door's very nice. Yeah, well that's the doors. Yeah, great not. <laughs> Come along in. This is our little antique shop that we... Um, you sell some stuff from here. Yeah, no, but it's Coffee. a hobby. Yes. We two like going junking. Th we go junking two or three things a week. Do you? Yeah. She says, um, 50 <laughs> till 50 and spend till the end. <laughs> and I have quite that. reached that. <laughs> so, I've got loads and loads of Chinese chinoiserie-influenced stuff here. Bits and pieces. Yeah, just, loads just of it. Just odd bits and pieces. Do you know what this is? No. It's a little tear bottle, Chinese, so the lovers would send their tears to each other mm, in nice. it. Do you feel how heavy it is? I thought it was a snuff mm. bottle at first, but I'm told that it's a... a oh, so you it's scoop got, your tears it's off. It's got... Uh, and you put them in there. Isn't that um, lovely? Yeah. So where's the love of all this Chinese and Japanese stuff come from? I don't know, it just sort of came out of the air. That's OK. I like anything beautiful. Yeah. They do make lovely stuff, don't they? Yeah. Wonderful things, yeah. yes. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, that's lovely, isn't it? Oh, uh, yes, what do you think about that? It's really... It's lovely, isn't it? Do you think it's, uh, early? Um, I'd say so, yes. Yeah. That, that's, um, 1500, 1550, uh, northern Frank, France. Wow. This is, um, this is Iranian, 5th century BC. Whose is this one? That actually belongs to me. There's some debate as to its authenticity. It's a tea. But probably it's not 17th century. Um, no. 19th century or later. Week, la week last Wednesday? <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you get this from... Was this from the house? I should think it's about... Turn of the century, 1890. Do you agree or not? Uh, yes. I'm glad I don't have to push it round the garden. A bit pricey for me at 150. Would you make an offer? Maybe. Trade price. I know mm. what I paid for it. How much did you pay for it? I paid... Don't tell him. <laughs> oh. I'll go and stand over here. I... <laughs> <laughs> How much? Uh, I don't know. Where, 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 what do you want to do? No, 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 This no, is no, your no. antique shop. This is your antique yes. shop. You're in charge now. I'm the customer. God, he's clever, isn't he? Um, um, 140? Yeah. Keep uh, going, keep going, Dave. No way! Going, yes, no way. way! Well, make me an offer. 100 quid. I paid a lot more. <laughs> no, I think we'll, we'll, uh, I think we'll, we'll keep it. Yes. The retail prices in this antique shop are too high for Drew to make a profit. 
If he's going to find anything today, it won't be in here. Should you the Aladdin's cave? That's a good idea, but I think it's probably full of rubbish. Why well, do we go no, through the... Let's, why do, why let's, do we go... let's see. I'd love yes. to see do you anywhere. Do you want to go through the garden yeah, or that'd back be great. through the house? Yes. When they said, well, the only place left is Aladdin's cave, I was like, you're there, that's it. <laughs> this is Aladdin's cave. And, oh, okay. um, sorry. Oh, dear. Don't worry. I'm so... not sure that you'll um, see oh, anything you never know. like him here. You never know. Maybe my expectations were high when they said Aladdin's cave, but um, no, unfortunately, nothing in there. Undeterred, Drew presses on and eventually finds a promising-looking shed. Uh, My gosh, what a lot of junk. Are you sure you don't want it all? Take it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are some glass demijohns, or what are they called? These would have wine and olive oil and things like that. The only thing in there was two little carboys, these two little bulbous glass jars in uh, little metal carrier crates. They're covered in bird mess. Yeah, these are great, aren't they? The ones I've had have had sort of paper prints on the front saying olive oil, wine, that type of thing. So they were used for storage. We can show you that this one. one but this I'm one's sure a lot older, I think. Is it? Yeah. Nice condition, particularly one of them. There's, they're not broken. No chips to the rims on the top of the bottle. Same size. And I like the little baskets they're in. Very lightweight, but they're unusual. Carboys like these were used from the 14th century onwards to transport wine, beer, and other liquids. These Victorian examples could fetch as much as eighty pounds each. Okay, so what are they going to cost me? Well, what do you? What's your? What's? What do you want to offer? As well, little as I can possibly get away with, to be honest. I love that. <laughs> no, I want you to make me an offer. Well, I can't be buyer and seller. <laughs> no, come on, Charlie. Come on. Okay, you got... I have no idea. No idea. So what would why... you be happy with? What would you be happy giving me? Uh. Because they're not the finest antique in the world, but they are. A... No, they're certainly not. One hundred and fifty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gardener, comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking a lot less. I was thinking sort of 40 quid. No yeah. way! Yeah. I needed to, I think, lower Charlie's expectations, so I sort of chopped them right down to 40 quid, knowing that she'd go, what? Uh, but maybe we could start to get on a level where we could start buying them. 100 for the both of them. 100 for the both of them. How about we split it at sort of... 75 quid? 80. 80 quid. Thank you. No, we'll have those. <laughs> OK. £80 for the pair, £40 each. Fine, I'll buy them. Still a lot for two empty glass jars in rusty metal frames, but they're very good-looking. They're a good size and they're a pair. Okay, is, uh, have we seen everything? Well, not quite everything, but just about everything. <laughs> it's everything that's for sale. sale. But okay. I'm sorry that there wasn't more for sale. Don't worry, don't but worry. It's, it's taken no nearly a hundred years for me to collect all those bits and pieces. <laughs> I understand. I understand. That's fine. Being, but anyway, it was really being good a to meet you. Collect to you. yourself, you'll understand. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't collect much. Yeah. <laughs> good to meet you, Shirley. You drive a very hard bargain. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> okay. Thank you. See you again. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye bye now. I have sort of not got what I've come for. You know, to buy two little things, really not enough. I've just heard from Drew. And sadly, things aren't going well for him. He's not finding an awful lot to buy. Uh, he sounds very down. He misses not being at home. Um, and all the expenses are just, you know, they're mounting up, mounting up, and he's not able to put the stock in the van to bring home. Rather than returning to Wales with just a few items, Drew and Julian press on further south to Dorset in the hope of salvaging this long trip. Good morning. Could I speak to Mr Chapman, please? Good morning, Winston. It's Julian. Um, I'm with Drew Pritchard. Uh, we have spoken recently. We are in your area. Would it be convenient to call in today? Yeah? Um, in the next sort of half an hour, three quarters of an hour? That, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, OK. Lovely. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. 
Cool, he's happy for us to go. He's happy. Cool. I'm uh, Winston Chapman. I've lived here nearly all of my life in Dorset, in West Dorset, and I'm a farmer. And, uh, he does make cider. Oh, yeah, his own cider. It's a bit early, but uh, it's not. No, it's not. Actually, it's it's not. we're awake. We can I'm drink really cider. <laughs> But it seems that Drew's fame hasn't quite made it this far south. Yes. Hi, Drew. 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 Who? Drew Pritchard. We spoke Drew on Pritchard. the phone. Oh yeah. Well, you spoke right. to Jules. You just spoke to Julian on yeah, the phone. Yeah, I spoke to me on the phone. Hi, oh, yeah. Julian. How do you do? Um, yeah. Well, we're here about your call to us. Oh yeah. You've got some stuff in some sheds. Well, I've got some stuff, but whether you'll like it, I don't know. But oh. we can have a look. Uh, yeah, please lead on. Okay. Let's have a quick look. Like country houses, farms often have outbuildings full of stuff that interests Drew. Fab old building. But farmers are a notoriously eccentric breed and often tricky to deal with. So where do we start? OK, you follow me in then. <clears throat> well, this is the inside of the building. Went into the first part of the barn and his son's using it for storage. There's some skittles he's been working on. Timber's that? Uh, lignum, lignum vitae. Lignum vitae, yeah. 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 So they, make bowl, they make crown green bowls out of yeah. this, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At first, it looks like the shed has nothing of interest, but in true salvage hunter style, Drew spots something hidden in the corner that he suspects is extremely special. What's that door there? That's been... It was an old blacksmith's door from down in the village, and um, all the customers had their names um, burnt into the door. And it's about as special as it gets. Antique doors like this are very popular, often converted into tables or panels. This one-off piece of local history could easily sell for upwards of £200. So these are all his customers? Yeah, yeah. Any, yeah. any names you recognise? Yeah, quite a few of those, yeah. Happis, that's an unusual name. How old is this? How, what have they dated it to? Um, I would think it's, um, it's around the, you know, the turn of the last century. Cop. Gardener, Manly, Cousins, Turner. What's that? Rat mens. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. It's the sort of thing I'd love to have in the shop. I'd love to sell it to you, but I'll, I can't let you have that one. No, no. OK. It's a blow, but the first rule of salvage hunting is to keep looking high and low. Eventually, it pays off when Drew spots some large baskets. We use them for, um... Transporting a few chickens if we need any chickens. I wondered what was what had been in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or duck. But they have a certain charm about them. Um, these ones are a little bit different to the norm because the names across the front. So when you stand back from it, the lettering's quite sweet across the front. A little bit different. Would you part with these, Winston? These for sale? I'd have to find something to replace them. But the question is, are they for sale? So far, Drew has had no success in convincing Winston to part with anything. But surely a pair of old baskets he uses to transport chickens won't have any sentimental value. I'd be interested in those and any others of these you've got, as many as you've got, really. Yeah, I, um, I think that, that's the um, limit of it. Is that, the, that two? Just, just a yeah. brace. All right. Vintage hampers are very popular with photographers and decorators. These early 20th century examples could fetch up to £120 each. If they're for sale, what would you want for them? Um, I don't know, you make me an offer, cos you're the one doing the buying. Yeah. What about 50 quid for the pair? That's pretty good. Well, I think you could do a bit better than that. I'll uh, have to work a bit of cider into you if you can. <laughs> you can try. Yeah, I can't, yeah. Show me the cider. <laughs> 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 Maybe uh, sixty pound, thirty pound a piece. Um, keep thinking. Keep, you keep thinking. You keep thinking. Am I getting anywhere near? Well, a little bit more might be nice. Yeah. What about seventy-five pound a pair? Give me a couple of minutes to think about it. Okay. Drew decides on a tactical retreat and lets Winston show him his pride and joy: the cider house. Stubbs Arms. Yeah. This is a cider room. Wild cider perfection. <laughs> is that your own brand, is it? Well, more or less. The whole sort of feeling in the cider house is just great. It's somewhere you just want to hang out. You want to go and sit down there and have a, a pious uh, homemade cider, 
by the fire, listen to the radio and have some laughs. It just looks like a fun place to be. The juice runs into there. Yeah. 80, 90 gallons to about 120, 130 gallons Ooh. on a squeeze. A proper Dorset cider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is about the most blokiest shed we've been in for a while, actually, yes. isn't it? It's the... It's, I want it's one of these. the best this sheds at the bottom of anyone's yeah. garden. <laughs> You've got a brewery in your garden. It sounds like the best hobby in the world. It's got to be, isn't it? It's just, it's just, just got to be. It's, it's not a hobby, is it, I suppose? It's a tradition. No, it, it is a very traditional thing, and there's not much cider made with um, straw nowadays. But even the promise of super-strength cider can't put Drew off his game, and he spotted a gem. Oh, this is nice. That is nice, yeah. This is good. Where do you get this from? I was hoping you weren't going to notice that one. This is something I'd be really keen on buying. Benches of this scale are rare and very saleable. Drew has recently sold a similar one for £1,500, so this is exactly the piece he'd like to take away with him. Would this be something you'd be willing to sell? It would be like selling a wing off an aeroplane. Oh, really? If I sold that, my life wouldn't be worth living. That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll get my coat. <laughs> <laughs> Finished. <laughs> Well, it's so comfy and it can tell so many stories and everybody around here would kill me if I, if I got rid of it, so um, it's staying, I'm afraid. Once again, local history and sentimentality has stood in Drew's way. But rather than leave empty-handed, he has one last go at making a deal on the hampers. What about these, these baskets, what do you reckon? We got um, a deal? Can we have a deal on them? What did you say? A hundred, was it? No, no. no the, must, the cider must be affecting your ears, Winston, to be honest with you. Um, I, say, I think we went to 75 quid. It's a hundred, wasn't it? He, no, he won't. Trust me, he won't say anything. I'm sorry, um, you're not going to pull me into this one. Yeah. No, I have, to, I have to work with him. Yeah. Um, I'll split the difference in. Go on. OK. Split the difference between 75 and 100. OK. Roughly speaking. Roughly speaking. 80 quid. <laughs> 85, then. 85 quid. There okay. you go. Thank you. Cheers, Great stuff. <laughs> All right, so we'll get that. Let's fill those baskets full of cider and get right. them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's plenty of holes in the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I decided to let him have them, cos I probably, I probably won't uh, use the baskets, or if I do, I'll have to find something to replace them, which would probably cost me £85. Yeah, I took pity on him. Because he, he was really struggling. Yeah, these are great. Uh, really like them. The best. That's just that uh, lettering on the front makes them. Well, it's different, yeah. It's different to um, my normal mornings. Much more relaxed. Usually we're very busy, so um, this is like being on holiday. You blokes have it too good. As they load up the van, Winston presents Drew and Julian with a memento, a sample of his homemade cider. Winston. Why is yours bigger than mine? <laughs> well, some things in life oh, are just okay, like some things just like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just born lucky. Cheers, Jim. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. Thanks, Winston. Okay. I'll, I'll treasure this for at least ooh, till about eight tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. See you okay. again. Yeah. Take yeah. care. Cheers, bye bye. Cheers, bye. Now. I want to go to one of Winston's evenings. Yes. Like more than most places I want to go. <laughs> I want to go to one of his do's at night over there. When they uh, get all that cider out in that little room, sounds brilliant. Sounds great fun. Yeah, brilliant. Back at base, Rebecca and Mark, unaware that Drew has only found a few items, are clearing the backlog of jobs in anticipation of a new van load of stuff. But renovator Gavin's mind is clearly elsewhere. Wakey, wakey! Oh, it's... <laughs> you lot boring me. <laughs> uh, right, we've, we've just been walking around the showroom. We've got to get everything ticket and price ready for Drew when he comes back. What did he say he wanted doing to the pair of pillars? Cast iron pillars. He just said... Clean them. Jet wash and that was it, isn't it? Mm. Mark has offered... I can do. <laughs> He's going to do some <coughs> manual labour. Do you want to show you how to use the jet wash? Yes, please. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'll man the phones. It's, okay, uh, and then I'll price. The jet wash working, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Good. Your wellies. Leaks. Oh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? it? Oh, it leaks all down your arms. Yeah, that's right. I can cope with that. 
Do you need a bath? It's not Sunday, is it? It's not bath day. <laughs> It is, it's bath night tonight. Hey! <laughs> Sunday in Plan Roost. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? With the whole team getting ready for an influx of new stuff, the pressure is on Drew to fill the van. On his way home from Devon, he takes a short detour to a legend in the salvage world who may just save the day. Based in the village of Old Sodbury, just outside Bristol, Jim Wilkie has a passion for Land Rovers and vintage agricultural machinery. Well, today we're down near Bristol, and it would be, I think, rude not to go and see Jim Wilkie. OK. Jim Wilkie of Land Rover fame, uh, infamous Jim Wilkie, who started the Old Sodbury Sortout. All right, this is Wayload, where we do lorry load weighing equipment normally, but also the home of the Old Sodbury Sortout, although we now go around the country with it. It started here, and what it is, people bring Land Rover fools of drunk, uh, they load up their trailer or they load up the Land Rover and bring all the bits that are left over, because it's a funny thing, if you repair a Land Rover, you always seem to have a lot of bits left over. Got to be worth calling in, and also I think he's a, 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 a prolific hoarder of junk. Hoarders may have lots of stuff, but as this week has taught Drew, getting them to part with their treasures isn't always easy. Hey, dude. Are you, are you lost? Hi, you Jim? Yeah. Uh, my name's Drew. Hello, Drew. Um, we've heard of you on the Land Rover Grapevine. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> I, I believe you run the old Sodbury sort out. That's right, yeah. So uh, we were in the area. Yeah. And uh, there's a pal of mine, Jules. Hi. Hi, Jules. Hi, and, uh, well, we just thought we'd call in. Well. You've come to the right place. A lot of it sort of tends to hang around. I'm, I'm alleged to put the old in, old sod in old sodbury. I'd, you know? I'd heard that, but I wasn't yeah. going to say it. No, so, you, well, so you are the official, the old yeah, sod. Yeah, well, the sun's shining today, so the temper's good, so that's all right. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, are we okay to have a look around, around yeah? yeah? of course, yeah. Oh, great, OK. This has uh, definitely got potential. Um, it's off the beaten track. You can't see it from the road, uh, so there's going to be a lot of stuff here that hasn't moved in years. You've got so much stuff in here. It's, it's very, very light. How rotten. It's You're a proper sodbury. hoarder as well. You know where you got everything from. I have all this stuff. It just, I like it, so I have it. It isn't everybody's taste, but it gives me pleasure, and I, I enjoy looking at it. I suppose at one level, you could say it always talks to you. I do like somebody that does the job properly and is prepared to burrow. I was amused, actually, when Drew, just watching his back end as he went in there, it was just like watching a terrier going after a rat. The only thing he didn't have was a tail that wagged, but otherwise, it was just the same. Yeah. Drew loves all old vehicles, and it's not long before he's distracted by something with four wheels. I like this, Jim. Oh, yeah, it's a bit different, isn't it? Well, as far as I understand it, it's either the French or the German version of the uh, Alpine Laboratory, because it was a Swiss Army tool for checking uh, the Alpine uh, avalanche risk. FBW was a Swiss company making vans and buses from 1922 to 1984. This 1940s mobile laboratory is worth around £6,000 in its current condition. It's just great looking and the styling of it is, is superb. It's got a sort of slight art deco-y, jet age sort of style to it, which I think is really beautiful. God, no. Wow, this is fantastic, Jim. If I was going to buy this today in this condition, what what's it worth? Well, I, I suppose if you came in and weighed 5000 at me, I would be tempted. The interior is fantastic, the condition is amazing, uh, everything from the wheels, uh, it, it's just a great looking big truck. And they've got the maker's mark here, this yeah, is, there you the, go. That's the coach builder. That's what I was yeah. saying, yeah, Corrosory, yeah. which is the coach builder. Lagenthal AG Lagenthal. And I tell you what, they did a bloody good job, didn't they? It it's incredible condition. Yeah. If it went to an auction, I think it make considerably more than that. It's, yeah. it's that old thing of, of you know, if somebody hit me on the right day at the right time, five might do it. If it went to an auction, it, I'd, I'd expect it to make quite a bit more. Mm. Well, I can see it being used as a transporter for a historic mm. race car. I think it's got that written all over it. A 50-year-old truck isn't really what the team is expecting Drew to bring home. So, reluctantly, he gets back to business. And refocused, the hunter turns up something that may just salvage the whole trip. I like these old chairs, Jim. Right down in the back in the left corner, there was this stack of uh, Cox chairs, which are the stacking chairs that everybody remembers from school, usually, with the little canvas seat in back. These seem all right. Yeah. 
Well, they've been, they've been undercover most of the time. These are sort of ten a penny chairs. Just starting to be of interest to me for our sort of clients who are doing pubs and restaurants. Oh, yeah, these stacking, stacking tubular ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a Land Rover connection there, I suspect. Is there? Because if they, yeah. If you look, it's a Cox, Cox, Cox chair. Yeah. Well, Coxies used to make a lot of the seats for Land Rovers, the uh, Range Rover seats. If you look, it's oh, the same okay. people that did the Range Rover seating. Are they something you'd, you'd want to sell? They're, they're stuck in the back of the shed there. Just yeah, they could, they could move on. Yeah. Uh, there's, um, there's some rust staining on some of the canvases on some of them. Oh, yeah. I, I, think, I think there's 20. I'll go back in and count. I think I'll be sure cautious about the canvas anyway, because you're probably, you're probably as well to renew that, because it's only a sale-making job, because yeah. otherwise they give way. British firm Cox designed their iconic stacking chairs in the 1930s. Chairs like this in good condition can sell for £25 each. We need to put some weight on one and test it, really, don't we? <laughs> You're actually going to let me sit down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, happy days. <laughs> oh, I don't mind if sit I Sit on both, you know, because you are, you know... Rotund? No, well, no, larger. Slightly overweight, larger How's than the that? average are they, are they making ripping noises? No? I'll give it a minute. Try that one. That one's rusty. Oh, sorry. You're not getting a rest, you're just testing. <sighs> Well, get the other. If you get the other ones down, I'll test them as well. <laughs> yeah. These chairs are just the renovation project that Drew's looking for to keep Gavin busy for a few days. He just needs to get them at a price that can give him a profit. What would you want for the for the twenty? If they're all all right, I would have thought one hundred and fifty would cover them. There's about. 25% of them are got some rust staining on the seats. One leash where there's a bolt missing as well, they're fixing, but it's just an ordinary Whitworth screw goes in. I think they're Whitworth. Yeah. So, 150 for these? Yep. Deal? Deal. You're on. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers, Jim. OK, on to the next one. Just as he'd hoped, this visit is paying off. Moments later, Drew spots something else. What's that? It's one of those. Oh, is it? Oh. Mm. Yeah. Is there a clue on it? Yeah, I've just spotted, I think it's a lamp. It looks like a lamp. Yeah, it's probably... Novelty it's... lighting sells well, and this medical lamp, probably from the 1950s, could fetch around £100 when rewired. Look at that. Is that cool? Oh, I, like I get that. it. Funky, isn't it? Would you want to sell that, Jim? Yeah, I think so. I've um, got no idea what it is or what it's for. It looks medical, vaguely medical, doesn't it? It does. It looks impressive, doesn't it? Yeah, Even though I have no idea. I've no idea what it is either. Quite. And I don't know, I have no idea really what it's worth. What would you want for it? I thought about £25 would cover it. Um, yeah, I was thinking 20 quid, so what do you reckon? Can we do a deal? Sure. I reckon we do a deal at 20 quid, yeah. Lovely. Sure. Sure. I'll have that. I've got no idea what I've just bought. No, Ollie, you'll love that. It's good, it's good looking though, isn't it? Great shape. It's a great looking great thing. Great shape. I love the, the bar thing on it. You can move it around. Twenty for hundred and fifty. Is that seven pound fifty each? That's it. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. We found five more chairs to match the 20 we've just bought in the barn. They're in much worse condition, but they might, might yield some sort of good pieces to fix some of the other chairs. So we might get 20 good ones out of the batch. That would be great, a real saving. When he's tidied them up, he will make sure they go to somebody that appreciates them, if only because they're the only people that will pay the price he needs for them. But they will be in good hands and, and they'll be kept. The bar's in there, you see, it's just yeah. screw, yeah. Uh... No, great. You want to screw any... You want a rubber washer in there? There should be a rubber washer between the... Sure, we'll sort that out. Brilliant. Any more of that, Jules? Um, no, but if you take these off me, I will grab that torch off you and I'll have a gander under the stand. And it's not just Drew who's on the ball today. Jules, have you just dug this out? Yes, mate. That's in quite good nick, though. These BP enamel signs are very easy to sell. Drew has an almost identical one for sale at £450. What would you want for these signs, Jim? Um, the... I suppose you've got to be looking at 120 each for them. What's the condition of the back one? Uh, well, they were tarred over, you see, to make the shed. So, mm. you know, as only as the tar wears away, you realise what they are. 
Um, I think we'll take... Can we take this one for 100 and do it for 100? No, we wouldn't do it for that. No? No. The trouble is, you know, with doing the sort out to Bewley, we see what they can command down there. So. They can, can't they, these ones? Yeah. yeah, particularly in good condition. OK, look, right, let's take that one at 120. We'll take it. If I can pull this one out of here and it's not in too bad a condition, I'll, I'll buy this one as well. OK, I'll on. be all right. Jules! 120 each for those signs. You know, I tried to haggle him down a little bit and then I thought, no, I might just pay the guy. You know, that's a good price. So, with his reputation intact, Drew calls it a day. I found some good things here, some saleable items at great prices. Good contact with Jim. He now knows the sort of thing I want. Jim's just really amiable, you know, a lovely guy. Um, not bothered about us turning up, freely giving his time for us. So, yeah, great, why not? I think we can load up now, Jules. Yeah. yeah. Certainly made a change from the normal routine and, uh, you know, glad to see him because it's always nice when an enthusiast drops in and just as happy if somebody comes in for a natter and we spend all day looking at stuff and do nothing. But it's a shared enthusiasm. If nothing else, it validates your, your desire to keep the junk. Find somewhere for that. Jim, right. really enjoyed that. Well, Great. Thanks for just letting us turn up and wander around. It's really well, good. Well, I was going to say, I'm afraid it's disrupted your schedule a bit today. It has a bit, really. <laughs> wasted half the day playing in trucks, but still. <laughs> Not wasted. Not wasted. Not a wasted, Not a wasted time. time. Anyway, if you've but... enjoyed it, that's amazing. Oh, well, a great yeah. time. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Cheers, Andrew. Thank you very Have much. Have a good trip. Thank Cheers. Cheers. Worth calling in. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. I love watching wander around all that stuff. Brilliant. He had a proper, it was a proper mess, wasn't it? It was. He needed the old salt need sorted. <laughs> well, yeah. At least one member of the team is anxiously awaiting Drew's return, whilst the others rush to finish the jobs in time for his arrival. But will they think his trip was worth it? Ta -da! So we've got another one to add to the collection. Yes. So, so, so we've got two size. now. Same, same size. size. This one's two. earlier, because nice. you can date them if you look down yeah, on the bottom yeah. there. Uh, this week, great. We found some super things. Uh, we had it all this week. Wait. Good, huh? Cox stacking chairs. Right, we have to guess. Well, it's a lamp. It's a yes, lamp. It's a lamp. That's fantastic. Not as we know it. Would it be not a, a rod? Right, see, so it screws in there. Mm. So a floor mounted base, then a screw in pipe, then that. Then this, that would have gone through there. So it turns. So it's directional like that. That's fantastic. It is, Isn't it, it is. great? Yes. I loved it. Yes. Cooling. Yeah, I think it looks like something off Doctor Who. Don't you think so? It looks like one of those oh, heads. So. Oh, right, yeah. That's what I, I don't mean. know what you mean, though. A few days later, and there's a delivery outside in the yard that's got Drew spinning with excitement. And the best thing I've found in ages is these babies. These were something we bought uh, in Stafford off the specialist guys there in air and ground. The good news is we sold them in less than 24 hours. They've gone. Uh, they've gone to a pal of mine, actually, who drove in, and he goes, God, I love those. They're brilliant. I really, really what do you want for them? And he gave me a bid. I said, yeah, you're sold. I think sometimes the first bid can be the best bid and just, like, sod it, take the money. Uh, but they're really cool. I mean, look at them. They're the business, aren't they? When I saw them hanging up there, I just had to have them. We soon changed our minds about them when we went to unload them off the van, which took four of us four hours. Um, for something that flies, these are seriously heavy pieces of kit. You can't even move them. Drew's reputation is built on his ability to source items that no other dealer will have. This means he has to constantly think outside the usual antique dealer's box. But there's one type that almost always comes up with the goods for him. Compulsive collectors. In my line of work, you do meet a lot of collectors of all sorts of things, really, and I've got several people lined up for 
items that I buy all the time because these collectors are a backbone of my business and I need them as much as they need me. Can't get over the weather. It's following us, mate. Accompanied by his trusty sidekick, Julian, Drew sets off to meet a brand new contact who he hopes will become a regular supplier. They're taking a five hour drive to Portsmouth to meet a man who's turned his obsession with collecting into a business, supplying costumes and period weapons to film companies. Good luck is following us, Julian. Good luck. <laughs> it's about bloody time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's the right down here. What's this guy called? Hamish. We're theatrical armourers, uh, prop manufacturers, costumiers, and we work in film, television, and theatre. Apparently, that's it. Hamish? Yes. Drew. Hi, nice Drew to meet you. Julian. Hi, Julian. Hello, Julian. Do you want to come on in, have yeah. a look around? Yeah, I'd love to. I'm love sorry to. about the mess, but uh, have to take us how you find us. No, no, that's fine, no problem. Quite a mix. Yes. We have equipment, clothing, armour, swords, shields, various kinds of props from ancient Greece, Spartans, right the way through the Roman era, medieval, through Victoriana, the Napoleonic Wars, World War I, World War II, the Gulf War, the Falklands War. This is completely different from downstairs. I've got you know, a whole floor just full of uniforms. This is all original stuff in here. Here's a test for you. One of these is original, one of them's reproduction. Oh, really? Original. Correct. Yeah, it was just the zip. Yeah, it's good the only thing. Yeah. Well, there's an A2 in extremely really good, good condition. original condition, isn't it? And you can just oh, see wow. it had yeah, a paint yeah. of an eagle on the back. Commonly known as a bomber jacket, the A2 was designed in 1930 for use by the US Army Air Corps. Vintage examples like this can sell for upwards of 200 pounds. I've got a particular fascination with sort of uh, Second World War American flying jackets. They're good looking, they're comfortable and they're desirable and maybe even me could look good wearing one. Can I try it on? Try it, yeah. I was getting as excited as he was and I was begging for that thing not to fit him. It was too small. Just so it wouldn't be so painful when I said, no, it's not for sale. <laughs> but just how cool is that? It just feels, it feels perfect, doesn't it, on? I really want one of these again. If I was going to buy the jacket, it's, there's no way I could even deceive myself by thinking it was going to be a buy for the business, because it really wouldn't be. It's for me. Well, am I all right to have just a sift through, then? And just, yeah. if I find something, I'll just shout out and say, what about this, what about that? Yeah, yeah, just have a, have a dig around. Antique weapons are a very specialised market, and one that Drew usually avoids. Walking around in his warehouse, there's boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff, most of it of no interest to me. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? You've got a fantastic stock of stuff. But suddenly, he discovers something that does pique his interest. Roman shields. Quite like these shields. Yeah, sort of 19th century yeah. house decor. Yeah, uh, they'd, they'd stick this up to aggrandise the living room, wouldn't they? Either side of the fireplace, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Though not the real deal, these reproduction shields are just the kind of decorative item Drew's customers love and could bring around £100 each. These have been, you know, on the wall of many a film set and also, you know, with corporate functions when people are having a sort of medieval Christmas feast or something like that. These are really quite battered. Yeah, there's a couple of nice ones in there. The good ones, I should imagine I'd be able to get 100 quid for a good shield. Mm. The bits where they're damaged, you're looking at sort of 30, 40 quid. So you, see, you think you've got two at 100 pounds each? Yeah. And then, and then the, the rest are sort of 30 quid. Yeah, 30 quid. So you're looking at 330, 360 for the pile. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. Could we do sort of 275? Um, I don't like the number five, so if we do 280, I'll let those go. OK. Will you chuck in the two knackered ones for the bits? Now, oddly enough, I was going to uh, suggest that you took those. I know that if I took them out and restored them myself, made the repairs, cleaned them up, I probably would get more money than that, selling them individually. But the fact that Drew's happy to come in, take the lot, take them away as they are, yeah, it's a, it's a deal.
Hamish's collecting bug isn't just restricted to Militaria, so it's off to his farm to see what his personal collection may have to offer. Just have a dig around in here, then. And on arrival, Drew heads straight for something that he just can't stop collecting. It's just all landy parts in this side. Yeah, that's a, that's a complete Series 1. I'm looking for a Series 1 Landover. I want one. Did my best not to just, you know, drool all over it. But his business head takes over, and he resists the Land Rover. For now. There's some fairground stuff. Is that where oh, I see. Oh, I see. Never been used. Yeah. Well, they're quite good, aren't they? Yeah, they're the type that don't need an engine. You know, the children yeah. just sit on and pull on the pull street. The, uh, the whole thing's there. The frame's there. All the poles, the poles everything, the carriages, all the carriages, the Yeah, the whole lot. You just need to pull a few of these things out and you'll be able to have a look. Yeah. There you go. It was an old set of swing boats. Vintage rides such as this rarely come onto the open market and can be difficult to sell. But the right buyer would pay around £1,800 for this pristine example. You don't know anything about its age, did you? Were you told anything by the people you got it from how old it is? These small rides for children, again, you're talking sort of late Victorian times, it became popular for to have sort of kiddies' rides. It's pre-engine, it's pre-motor. So how much is it for me to take a chance on it? Well, there's four boats. Um, so 100 quid a boat, and you can have the frame for nothing. Jesus, that's really good of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> gee, thanks. Wait, well, the boats are bloody useless without the frame. <laughs> Let's meet in the middle. 350? Well, 350 for the frame, and you can have the boats for nothing. <laughs> that's a better deal. <laughs> deal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 350 pounds may be a lot for a ride that he hasn't even seen put together, but sometimes it's all about the gamble in salvage hunting. Yeah. Have a look in here. And the fun might not yet be over. There's still another shed. Swiss. Mm. Swiss. Uh, could that be sold? Yeah, they can go. Yeah. Drew knows that decorative items like this Victorian copper lantern could easily bring £200. This looks like it's made up of component parts. It's quite nice. I'd be looking for sort of, I don't know, 30, 40 quid for something like that. Oh, God, yeah, that's fine. That'll clean up nice. Yeah, that's fine. But I'll definitely take that one. That's quite nice, isn't it? It's a charming little thing. Children's toys are easy to sell, both to collectors and interior designers. This late 19th century example could easily fetch £160. I think we can all agree that it's been played with. Yeah, but not too bad. It's still got its ears. Price? I think I'll be wanting to get, like, 50 quid for that. It's got a metal head in there. That's a good toy, and it, it is all there. It's not knackered. I'm not going to knock you on the price for that. Yeah, we'll take Always that as popular. well. popular. Yeah, for sure. Nope, have that. But the child's toy only seems to remind Drew of the big boy's toy he really wants, and it's back to the Land Rover. It's been partially disassembled, but everything is here. This regularly started, so you only need to put the battery in and it will go. It will go, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right. A 1952 Series 1 Land Rover like this could fetch upwards of £2,500 in its current condition. You've got the doors, yes. wings, yeah. bulkheads all good. Windscreen is there. Yeah, here, there with the brown finish. I've been looking for one in this sort of condition, ideally complete and running, for a while. What would you want for it? Hamish clearly knows exactly what this is worth, and Drew knows it will be a difficult purchase to explain to wife Rebecca. His head is telling him to walk away. What would you want for it? Um. Well, I mean... We all know that uh, we can get a pretty good price for this if we continued and restored this. Yeah. I can see nearly everything for it. I know it's got no hood. There's no hood sticks or anything here. No, we haven't got the sticks for this I'll one, take it away as it is. No. As, as it is, I'll just come here with the trailer and take it away. My whole sort of business plan and business brain has gone completely out of the window, and I'm just looking at it as something I want to buy. I suppose 2500 for it, because it's all there. Mm. I'll pay you £2,000. I'll take it as it is. It's not a business decision. It's, uh, it's a decision of the heart. OK, okay. you got a deal. Right, cheers. So it's Demons 1, Drew nothing. <laughs> At least we got the bolts. Probably the most important thing of it. Not going to go together without them. And whilst Drew is doing the deal on the Land Rover, Julian is left to deal with the business of loading the dozens of pieces of the fairground ride. Jules, 
We've got any air for these? Can you, can you yeah. get those in? And that one, obviously, so you know what it's like. Just be really careful with that. All oh, right, okay. All right. I know. Just wrap, we can wrap them, put them in the gondolas. So Drew's bought a 60-year-old Land Rover in bits and a vintage fairground ride in bits. He can only hope that both gambles will pay off. OK, nice. we're done? Yep, all, finished? all done, all loaded. Yeah, cool. All right, cheers, Hamish. Oh, it's a pleasure meeting you. No, no, really good, enjoyed it. Really uh, enjoyed. enjoyed my day as well. Thank you very yeah, much. Nice. I haven't guys. bought such a weird collection of stuff in ages. <laughs> Got a Series 1 Land Rover. You got, you got the toy you wanted. Fantastic. Land Rover pervert strikes again. <laughs> no, no. Back at base, online sales manager Mark, restorer Gavin and Drew's wife Rebecca are eagerly waiting to see what treasures Drew and Julian have brought back. Fairground ride. <laughs> really? Yeah. No. It's a bit small, it's a kiddie one. Kind of a fun day now, isn't it? Ah. Drew Pritchard's fun day. <laughs> Drew Pritchard's world of fun. <laughs> you haven't seen it in full working order? No. No. The wrong bits there? It was underneath a pile of car parts. Oh, but, okay. but, um, by my reckoning, all the bits are there. You've got to put it together, Gav. You've got to put it together. <laughs> <laughs> Two dead ones. It's a shield. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> No mention of the Land Rover so far. Maybe he's planning to use the shield as protection. They're real. He said so. They're real. But all the bits there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're real. Nice, aren't they? Just be careful with the couple of the details since we tightened up on them. Gaffer tape. Victorian gaffer tape. <laughs> well, I like that one. Absolutely genuine. I just thought they were good decorative things. I may be miles off and it may, may have given me some, I don't know, some drugs while I was there, but I think they're good. Oh. That's right, isn't it? That's very nice. That's very, very, very nice. It's pretty, isn't it? Very. All original, not been messed about with, glass in the base. You know, give it to Ollie. They that's... copy those now, don't they? We put yeah. candles in them. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. 19th century toy horse, probably German. So I just thought it was lovely. Really charming, bad. isn't it? It's absolutely Can you manage that charming. Gun? Condition's quite yeah. good. You sure you're right with that? Go and get the trolley. It's quite collect quite same collectible. Place? Same place. We got um, we got that. We got the horse and the lamp. Drew's been stalling, but here it comes. And a Series One Land Rover. So should we get this off now? And a what? And a what? A series. A Series One Land That's Rover. A car. Yeah. Is that in a box in there, or is it? A no, 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 no. It's really, really good. But all the bits are there. Just needs putting back together again. Great. Same as the fair ride, all the bits are there. All the all bits, are, bits there. are there, yeah, you promised me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that long ago I was carting a Morris Minor uh, up the M6. Am I dragging a trailer around the country again to come and get no, it? No, I'll go and get it. Don't yeah. worry. It might fit in the back here. Seriously? Yeah, it's only a little one, 80 inch. Drew may have dodged a bullet for the Land Rover, but he didn't get the reaction he expected from Rebecca and the team for the rest of the haul. My only reservation. Um, were the shields. Drew's favourite saying is, trust me, which we do, and he normally is right. On a personal note, they were fine, but they didn't make me go, ooh, you know, they're great. I do get um, a bit of a barracking from them when I've brought something that uh, they're not sure of, but what I love is that always the first thing that sells, or it sells well, and then we have people asking for more, and I love it, because it just, re just reminds them, know what I'm doing, get on with it. I can't wait to see the fairground ride set up, to be honest. That's, it's, it's so obvious, that's the one I want to see set up. Now we're going to get Drew to test it out. Rather than hang around, Drew leaves the shop to Rebecca and plans his next excursion to see what Britain's crazy collectors have to offer. This afternoon we're in Norfolk, which is known for just being flat and farmland, isn't it, really? It's super quaint. With no clear idea of who he'll be dealing with, Drew can only hope he finds something without four wheels to appease his wife and team back home. We're off to see a guy called Nick. 
he's a property developer. Basically lived in Norfolk all my life, a bit of a collector of junk, um, general memorabilia. And he's open to offers and deals on more or less anything and everything. So it just sort of smells right. It looks like somewhere I want to go. And what Drew isn't telling Julian is that Nick also buys and sells old cars. This is it. Wow. Oh, yeah, this is great. Perfect. Hi, Drew. Yes, Nick. Hello, pleased to meet you. And you. How Thanks you for coming up. Bit of a no trip. Problem. Oh, yeah. Just hope there's something here of interest to you, really, yeah. so I can uh, show you around. So, where do you want to go first? Well, shall we start on the outside and have a look around? Store? Sure, Come lead on. Inside. Let's do that first. OK. While the sun's shining. At the start, I didn't know where to take him, where to lead him, perhaps to identify something he might be interested. No, no all bust. Firstly, if I show you um, a mould I've just found in a, sure. in a local scrapyard, it's basically a Lotus 30. But the only part we haven't got is the, is door. the two doors. Would yeah. have been fun, wouldn't it? Would, would have been fun, yeah. Loads of fun. The mould is something I wouldn't want to buy. You need to get drawings and you need to confirm that is absolutely the right one. Because if it isn't the right one, it's worth nothing. Oh, we like those. They're yeah. very good. These came from a um, property on the North Norfolk coast. These are very, very similar to a pair I've got on my own house. A pair of stone gate posts like these from the Regency period could easily sell for around £600. They are really good and they're of good size, so they've come off a decent sized house, not just a basic little, what we'd call a field post. They're the front entrance way, you know. They're lovely. Are these something you could sell? I've actually sold those on. OK. Hey, you know, next time. That's a cricket pitch roller. I think you're right. That's got to be the width of the crease, hasn't it? Yeah. This would have had a seat, you know, those tractor seats on there with the name on the back, steel, the sprung seat, and you sit along there all day with the horse. Not something I could buy, though. It's an old clawfoot bath. That is part of cattle feeds. They're really common now. Really but... common. We cannot sell them. We had about 30-odd in the backyard, didn't we, at work? Here we've got some old slate fireplaces. Wales is full of these. So that was made just up the road from our shop. Have lots of them, so it's just sort of lying around. Not something I can move back that way then. Definitely not. You'd have to pay me. This is a uh, turnstile. It does work. I mean, when it was upright, it did work perfectly. Yeah. Manchester company Ellison's patented their rush proof turnstiles for football grounds in 1895. A similar example to this one was recently offered for sale on an internet auction site for £400. Or is it something you want to sell, or...? I I'd sell it. I think, you know, make me an offer, really. Yeah, it sort of fits say, in yeah. with my sort of theme of things we do. It's an oddment. Uh, it can be used in a bar or a restaurant. It would just have to be cheap. Yeah. It would just be something cheap. It would be more or less scrap value, to be honest with you, yeah. because I'd just be taking a chance on it. So it would be... As long as it's all there, I suppose it would be a 50 quid type of item. Yeah. 50 quid? I think that's... Really? Lovely. Yeah. All right, there you go. That's laid was... around for so long. Oh, that's nice, but I need to that's have great. The there you go. 50 quid. Yeah. Though Nick's yard is packed full, Drew is finding precious little to buy. Maybe things not exposed to the weather will bring more luck. This is a clock came from... Um, I just want to light this. You like that, yeah? Yeah. That's good. The guy I purchased the clock from was basically from the Yarmouth area, and he'd given me some indication that during a refurbishment of one of the stations in Yarmouth that had been thrown out. A station clock like this is hugely desirable to railway enthusiasts as well as designers and photographers. After a quick clean and new wiring, this clock will bring in close to £500. Have you had it working? Have you noticed you've got a plug on it? I haven't tried it. I mean, you can plug it in and give it a go. It's either working or it's going to blow up. Yeah, that's working fine. Turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> yes. We'd be selling this on, so we've got to rewire it. People love to put those in their kitchens, and whenever I get one, it's sold like that. It's gone. I think I'd be fair with you. What if we said, um, really fair, £200? That is being really fair. Yeah? Yeah. Is that all right? That is a fantastic deal. Thank you yeah. very much. Probably going to leave it as it is. I, I like it as it is. Um, we're going to check the electrics out, though, because they're a bit... In this um, workshop we've got here, there's an old... Land Rover. He's welding, yeah? They're, 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 yeah, they always yeah, tend, tend yeah. to need a little bit of welding. Every Land Rover I get needs welding. So it's just bits and pieces, really, in here. Unless you want to buy a boat. Definitely not. Don't like boats, don't like the sea, don't like going in the sea at all. I think the sea's just full of things that are going to eat you. I like this, Nick. Oh, yeah, the waiting room sign, yeah. Depending on their size, antique signs can often fetch hundreds of pounds each. 
I like the fact that all the letters are sort of not quite straight. Yeah, they're all yeah, sort yeah. Of a bit jumbled, a bit badly put on. Ad hoc, aren't they? Yeah, quite like that. Is that for sale? Yeah, yeah. Again, I said yeah. anything's for sale, really. What sort of price would you want for this? What Again, would you like I for? think I quite like the idea of you bidding me. And it's a good decorative piece for a bar, restaurant, uh, clothes shop. How does uh, seventy-five quid? Yeah, that is definitely. Is that good. all right? Yes. Happy with that? Yep. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much. I like that. It's cool, isn't it? I like this as well. It's a really early 19th century English strapwork gate. Even simple iron gates are highly sought after in home restorations and can easily swing up to £150 each. Nothing fancy at all, nothing grand. Knocked up by the local blacksmith. Plain looks good, though, doesn't it? Really, you really plain. It it's charming. Somebody's... It's just, it's got a certain charm to it. Thing, and it's still got the little latch thing on there as well. That, a really charming little item, and I can sell that fairly easily. So yeah, I'm no, really it's good. Well, I'd like again, it'd be nice to see somebody use it again. Oh, I don't. Go on then. I gave you a bid on the last one. You tell me what you want for this one. Fifty quid. Fifty quid. Stick it on the van. Yep, That's we'll have job. that. Thank yep, you. Thank you. Another one bought. Thank you. Cool. Lovely. Drew's visit to property developer Nick has unearthed some good pieces for his business, but Nick also buys and sells old cars. I've been trying to ignore it since I walked in here, the 2CV. Oh, dear. Drew's like a lamb to the slaughter. Ha-ha. One this of my could loves. be yours. Oh, is it for sale? It's for sale. God, it's not, is it? It is. Oh. Another car in the offing and another chance for Drew to beat down his obsession. If completely restored, this iconic car could drive home a price of three thousand pounds. What state's the chassis in? Well, that's good. You know, it's it been patched over. I think it's had an odd repair. I purchased a Citroen probably about nine, ten months ago. At one stage, I was going to give it to my son. So I want to look at the chassis. It's had a great big sheet right across the middle of the chassis. Just a great big plate over the whole thing. The chassis rot like hell. Wouldn't take much to MOT it, especially with the workshop really? here. There's not many of them around. Some people hate them. I really like them. This is exactly the same as the first 2CV I had. I've had quite a few of these. It's a um, 1986 two-cylinder. No, I do like them. I like the sort of peasantness about them. Drew's carbine demons are definitely back and have found a friend in Nick. I've got to stop just buying cars. Stop next week. Stop next week. Buy this. Buy this one. 41,000, I say, the mileage is original, look in the condition of the interior. So what would you want for it as it stands, then? <clears throat> I think probably as it stood, 750. 750, ooh. With an MOT, 1,000 pounds. That's how confident I am. I wouldn't take that to put it through. I'm tempted, it just seems it's just a bit too much money. I'm sure there's nothing on it which will be detrimental. I think a gallon of fuel and a battery and she'll be away. I do like the idea of driving it away with an MOT. Yeah. But I'd, but I'd want to do that for 750 quid. Yeah, well, that's a little bit too cheap for me at the Is moment, I think. Yeah. A bit too much. <clears throat> I think we could do sort of 900. I'd split you in the middle. What if I come up to eight? Are we getting there? Because if you're, com you're very confident it's going to sell through an MOT, through, you see? The MOT itself will cost me £54. Is that what it costs now for yeah. a test? Eight fifty, and then you paid for the MOT at eight. MOT'd. Drive it away. Drive it away. Another car bought. Just what I need. Excellent. <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't help it. It's an addiction. <laughs> You're addicted to something. Yeah, I'm addicted to rust. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it is. Current score, Carbine Demons 2, Drew still zero. Some of the things today perhaps I've broken even on. Odd one, I've made a slight loss, but a couple of the others I've made a slight profit. So overall on the day, I'm very, very happy. And as they leave, Nick tips them off with the name of another collector in the area, who they plan to visit the very next day. Thanks, yeah, thanks very much. Enjoyed Have it. a safe trip, and I hope tomorrow goes well. Will do. Cheers. Thank Thanks, you. Nick. See you again. Cheers. Bye -bye. Thank you. Take care. So, that was a good day. Enjoyed that. Yeah. Bought a little bit. Paid too much for the clock. 
and the little sign, general waiting area. I could put that in the workshop. Waiting. <laughs> general waiting around and Gavin and Julian having a fag area. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. The turnstile, was it heavy? <laughs> Strangely, yes. I wouldn't know. As soon as I saw you going to load that, I thought, I've got some important business in the kitchen with a kettle. As Drew and Julian finish up with their first collector, Rebecca is back home preparing a nice helping of humble pie. The shields that Drew bought came in to the showroom on the Friday. And I'll eat my words, um, we sold one on the Saturday. <laughs> Drew's won again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, so um, that's going into the new nightclub in Clan Roost. Clan Roost is a small town just a few miles away from Conway. So Rebecca delivers the shield herself to landlady of Llewellyn's Bar and Club, Shirley. Hi, Hi Shirley. Oh. How are you? Thank you. Great. It's really good to see you. And you? Drew well, sends his regards. Oh, how's he getting on? He's all right. He's just busy. Bye. Wonderful. Where do you think you're putting it? I don't know. I thought on the stone over there. OK. You hold it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Here, have a look. Thanks. Oh, yeah, that'll be OK, won't it? Fantastic. Oh, that looks, that Does that looks look great. good. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. Fantastic. So why is Drew still on a mission to look for armour? I've always got on, on a mission for something, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, the theme is Llewellyn, so it's King, the great King Llewellyn, because he's connected to this town. Yeah. So he's looking for shields if we can get them with that sort of heraldry on it. Anything really mm -hmm. that's connected to Llewellyn. If I can leave the shield here, is yeah. that all right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It looks rather nice on the red, actually. It does, actually, yes. Yeah. Drew and Julian are on their way to Great Yarmouth to meet their second collectors of the trip, Ernie and his wife, Karen, who run a very unusual museum. Obviously, we're a Harry Museum and um, gift shop and everything else as well, so people can come in and see everything being made from start to finish. If we had to replace anything around the here, we had to a rib of an old ship or something like that, you know, you couldn't put a new piece of wood in anywhere, so had to come from underwater at sea. As well as all things herring, the place is filled with marine treasures, many of which keen diver and beachcomber Ernie has found himself. Well, this guy today has got for sale. He's got a museum of, of all things, herrings. Fish. Herrings. No, it's herring kipper? Smoked. Yeah, smoked herring. Yeah. It's a kipper? Yeah. Also, a kipper alike. Hi there. So, Karen. It is, yeah. Hi, I'm Drew. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Karen oh, is you. Ernie's wife. Please Met her as we first got there because Ernie was doing an art class. Uh, so we're just going to hang around to wait till he's finished doing that. Amazing place you've got here. Yeah, it's lovely. This place, an old herring curing works. Um, it's roughly 300 years old, and it's all made out of old shipwreck timbers. And we actually back on to the old medieval wall of Yarmouth, which is 700 years old. Ernie, my husband, does all the um, paintings and carvings. Looks like somebody we know. <laughs> it does, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah. You're not a fisherman, are you? <laughs> no, no. no, it's a fisherman's <laughs> friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bizarre place, the inside of the museum. It literally is where they smoke the herrings. So every time you look up the sort of 20, 30 feet above you of these little bars where they'd hang thousands of herrings to smoke. Is, is, is there anything in here that's for sale or...? Yeah. Or everything? Yeah. Everything. So everything in the building is for sale? There's, yeah. There's nothing off limits? Not really, no. Well, Karen is willing to show Drew around, but she can't sell anything until consulting with Ernie, who has an attachment to his entire collection. I'd like to sell, because with the money we could have more holidays and a little bit more time off. <laughs> this one um, came out of a dike. Um, was that way up in the mud, so obviously the top's well preserved. Yeah. But then the bottom, because it'd been up with the tide going in and out on it and the dikes, yeah. Um, the bottom had rotted away, so we had the bottom repaired, yeah. which was very, very expensive to get the same wood. Sea trunks like these were used in the 18th century by sailors as a place to keep their possessions. Values vary enormously, but a rare example like this could fetch around £1,500. Is that real? Yes, that oh, yeah, checks yeah. Out, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. this carving here yeah. is, I would say, older, and then... Yeah. Plus, see, that bit there, yeah. that's a bit just different. It's obvious, it sort of yeah. jumps straight yeah. out at you. Is this something that's for sale? Um, I think so, yeah. 
Karen would love to sell off the old trunk and buy some new rolling luggage, but she must still wait for Ernie. That's the skull of a, of a whale. That's right, yeah. That's still got the blowhole blow in it. Blowhole of a whale yeah. there. It's called the lucky seat. The lucky seat? Yeah. People sit on there and hope to win the lottery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. Yeah. Most of the stuff we've got in here has come up with a herring. I've seen a few of these old church pews you've got around as well, so do I need to talk to Ernie about these as well? Yeah. Yeah? This could be a great find. 19th century pews made of pitch pine are quite common on the salvage circuit, but an 18th century oak version like this is rare and could easily bring in excess of £400. How many have you got? Uh, three that size. You've got three with this carving on the, on the uh, ends? Uh, I don't know if they've all got... Both ends, this one has, yeah. Yeah. Um, they're actually sort of single-ended more than anything yeah, because they're, yeah. this, this is the side that's been against the, the wall. wall. Yeah, the church, yeah. 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 And they're a good size and yeah. the carving on them is quite nice. Yeah. I don't know if all three are like that. I know that one is. That okay. one is. I think the one outside's not as good. I think there. that one there's a bit longer. Get a better look at that end. There you go. How's that? <laughs> Did you say you had more of these? Yeah, there's n that one in there, and there's yeah. another one outside. One outside? Yeah, OK, there. we can see it in the light a bit yeah. better. So you want to put this one back in, Jules? I'm assuming this wasn't driftwood. <laughs> Definitely not. Where do you find these? Uh, they come out of a local church. No. I'm going to have a quick look at the other one while I'm just stood there, just to try and remember yeah. the shape, to see if yeah. they match or see if it's three-odd ends. That's one-ended, yeah? Yeah, single-ended as well. Do you want to lift that down? I'm trying to see the two together. Yeah, that which is quite normal, is the carvings on the ends of these pews, the little fleur-de-lis on the end, are different. Mm. And that's, that, that is normal. Yeah. So each, not each pew's individual, but there's just slight differences yeah. between them. OK. That end's not very good on that uh, one. Ah, yeah, that one's... Oh, dear, yes. Yeah. You've got a dose of worm. Uh, it's got yeah, more than the dose of woodworm. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, yeah. That has, yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. They've eaten it away completely. Yeah. That's beyond... Help, maybe do something with the top, but the rest of it's beyond help. So I think we're down to two and a half pews. So far, Drew has spotted several items he'd like to take home, but experience tells him that collectors are notoriously difficult to deal with, and Ernie is still nowhere to be seen. Frustrating, as there are treasures everywhere. Is that the um, coat of arms? Coat of arms for the yes, town. Yeah, and so this is one we think came off um, the Wellington Pier when they were. Taken it to pieces. So you got this from the seafront, from there? Yeah. Did you salvage any other parts? Anything um, else come from there? Well, uh, there's lots of bits and pieces sort of turn up, but the one we have got we use as a water fountain, which is one of the terracotta urns that were all away along the seafront years ago. They're all gone now. Drew has a suspicion that this could be a rare Victorian terracotta urn worth thousands of pounds. He snaps a photo and sets the team back home sleuthing. Good morning, Drew Pritchards. Oh, hi, it's me. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. I've just sent some pictures through. He wants us to find out a bit more about it. Is that right? There we go, yeah. Um, have you managed to look at the bit, you know, the ropes wrapped around the bottom? For the maker's mark? Yeah. OK. It's right now. All right, mate, I've got it. It's off being there now. That's the pier cap it's been sat on. Yeah. But there should be a base, a little square base like this that would have sat on top of that. Is that still attached to that urn? Couldn't tell you. OK. So if we lift it, yeah. do you want to have a look? With a square? Yeah. OK. One, two. Watch your back. No. The urn I found in the corner there um, is uh, a 19th century one. It's a Tarza urn, highly decorated, terracotta. Uh, it would have had um, a base section to it, a small square plinth base. And then as the body comes down and underneath the body, there's the sockle, which is the the section that attaches to the main body of the urn? No. Nothing? No. OK, watch your fingers. No. It goes from oh, there shame. to around. There's a piece missing. About that bit, yeah. There's that saying, piece, yeah. then there's a sockle that yeah. comes down, Yeah. then there's the base, then and then that would have there. sat on there. There's a square bit. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what's missing? What? The base. There's no base. And there's no base. Are you going to buy anyway? No. There's no base. I so said that. That's right. Like, the rope yeah. was wrapped around the bottom. So we've been. I know. I got half an hour. Should I charge you by the hour? Yes. <laughs> okay. Should yeah. we carry we'll on? Back through, yeah. Yeah. We'll back through. Okay. Finally, Ernie shows up, and Drew hopes he can begin negotiations with this compulsive collector. Hi, Ernie. Hi, oh, yeah. Hi. How are you doing? All right, sir. Good. Good. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, all right, mate. Hi. You're right. Julian. 
Um, we've had, good had a good look around. I know you've yeah. been busy. So there's yeah. a couple of things I wanted to ask you about. Uh, whether A, whether they're for sale, uh, and uh, what you'd want for them. Sometimes people, when they come up to you first, are very much on the defensive when you're trying to buy something. So it's best to try and get to know them first. We're not going to have that opportunity with Ernie. It's just straight in, and I want to buy that, and this is how much. Sometimes tricky. The box. Yeah, I like this. You like that? Yeah, let me get the other ending. That's a heavy old job, that one, isn't it? It eh? is. Yeah. That's a lovely old box, eh? Um, cool, I've had that, what? 30 odd years, I suppose, have we? Yeah, I'll sit Some there. Other. Deal work on the back's lovely, isn't it? Got attached to it over the years, to be honest with you. So but, is, uh, this, is, this something you, is this something for sale or is it not for sale? Oh, I don't know. I suppose if the price is right, you know, I might sort of consider it, really. Well, um, but, uh, I think I know what you're going to ask for it. A couple of thousand or something like that. Mm. It's such a lovely thing yeah. to own. But at £2,000, I can't buy it. When it comes down to the artefacts, especially if they mean something to him, then I wouldn't even propose to put a price on them. He has to do that himself, cos whatever I put on him, he'd say, well, yeah, I wouldn't let it go for that, so... Well, you're too cheap, you see. You tell, <laughs> you tell them too cheap. You know, you've got to, you know, swing it a bit. <laughs> The other thing that I'm interested in is, is this um, church pew here. You've got a, three of these. Yeah. Um, they are, unfortunately, they're, they're great. I really like them. But on this end of all of them, that's been against the wall. And you can see where half of the carving was never there. No. That was designed no. to go flat against the wall. And then the plaster was, was there. But what I was wondering, what are they for sale? And if so, what would you want for them? Say for these two, so it's for the two good ones. And then there's a sort of the restoration project outside. So I just wondered if you had any idea what you'd like for them. Never thought about it. Um, I didn't think for a minute you'd pick on the, all the other stuff around here. Right. <laughs> there's so much stuff here. I know to I pick know, a yeah. church pew out of a, out of uh, a herring yeah. museum. That's right. It's yeah. a little odd, I know. I can't say, really. Um, what about you, girl? You got any ideas? Mm. Mm. Would you want me to give you a bid on them then? Yeah, that makes life easier for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll start from your end. If these had the carvings to both sides, we'd probably pay about £250 per pew because they're just a huge difference. Mm. But that makes a massive difference. So what I'm prepared to do is £100 each for these pews and I'd give you £50 each for the rest... £50 for the restoration project and any other pieces that you have. But that is a restoration project. I'm going to have to probably spend 100 on that one to make it structurally sound. You mean the third one? The third one, yeah. So that's so it'd be 250 for the three pews. Right. Up to you. For 250 quid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't match up. That no, wouldn't go? No. OK. No. I just tend to think of all the people that are sat on it and things like this, you see. OK, well, but let's... again, there's a bit of history. We ain't doing too good in the way of selling it, but I know we... So what, what would you be happy with? What would I be happy with? I don't know. I, I, I tend to think I'd... I'd I'd have been happy with 300 quid for each one. You know, maybe it's a bit too far out. Right? That's yeah. a bit steep. Yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. What if I said we'd go for the three... Can we do 350? What, for all three? Yeah. No, no. I'll Tell go, you what, then. Go, 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 right. 350 and you keep the one outside. <laughs> 350. So it's 100... 175 a piece. Is that giving you a bit of a profit on them? Yeah. No, no. Enough. no. Ernie is uh, tough to deal with, and uh, the price is the price, and it's going to be tricky to move him. I can't give you six. I can't no, give you six hundred. I can't give you six hundred quid to them. I'd like to buy them. I do want because yeah. I know eventually it's all going to come on the market. So, and I don't get into this neck of the woods very often. Well, thinking about it, I don't know. It's hard to part with these things, you see. Um... Mm. There are some things that Ernie won't part with. It'd be like cutting his left arm off. But um, I, I definitely would. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll keep two. You, you buy that one. OK, what do you want for just the one, then? I want 250, really, but do you, what do you reckon? 230. 230? 230, and that's it, top dollar. I'm going to make, like, that much. That's it. There's just a little bit in it for me. <laughs> yeah, no, do I believe that? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Deal? 230. 230. All right. Lovely. Nice one. Thank you, Ernie. Good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get her outside. <laughs> Uh, 
Ernie, we're done. OK. Oh, we're lovely. Get off. Anyway, look, really Thank nice to meet much. you. Thank you very much. It's lovely to meet you too. Thanks for all Thank the you. tea. Ernie, Thank been a pleasure. Thank you. Lovely to really meet you. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Okay. There you go, pal. Cheers, mate. Interesting place they've got there. Yeah. Ernie and Karen, they were nice people, weren't they? They were nice people, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Ernie did have a striking resemblance to a purveyor of extremely fine fish snacks. Do you not think? <laughs> yes, he did, actually. I that think is. he's probably a captain. Do you reckon? Yes. You think he's a captain? Wow. Well. <laughs> oh, dear. Though the Herring Museum provided only one catch for the crew back home, Drew is heading back with a good haul from a three-day road trip and a nervous announcement for Rebecca regarding his growing collection of cars. Lots of nice new stock. You like this? It's very nice. That's the sort of thing. There's hardly anything, if anything at all, to do to that. Take all the old bits of wire off it and just give it a very small clean. I don't really want much done to it at all. One of your customers might be interested in that for uh, a restaurant. Oh, brilliant. OK. Yeah. It's not heavy, Gavin. You all right with it? Yeah. I know we've got hundreds of pews in stock, but bought this one. It needs work to this end, as you can see. Mm. This came out of a herring museum. Herring? Herring. Fish. 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 Herring the bird. Herring. <laughs> I thought you said herring. Flying fish. I know we've got, like, what, 300 pews in stock? Yeah, but not like this one. No, it's just a nice this one. Is... It's got a bit of age to it as well, particularly to the ends and the back. Maybe the seat's been replaced, but it's quite an early one underneath all that. How old? 1700s. Gosh. Yeah. Great. Put on the shop entrance. Yeah. We and should charge admission. And charge we? admission. North Wales is only free museum. <gasps> yeah, needs a little bit of work, so we'll leave it straight out of here. It'll go to Paul, get it welded up. Yeah. Just need got a little crack on there. <laughs> what do you think? Just yep. a clean. Got a little bit of a chip in there, Gav. So just a wash and a little dab of paint, and that one's ready to go. The best thing we got was this. It's a 24 hour electric clock. Fantastic. Love it. It works. I'm just deciding whether to leave it in the paint, strip it, or polish it. I'm not sure what to do with it yet. Really don't know. What do you think? Just leave it in the paint. I think so. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I need to rewire it, Ollie. I just need to check the wiring on yeah, it. Yeah, that's not a problem. It works. At least it, if it works, that's the biggest problem. It works, but yeah. it's not so clever, the wiring is. So what I'd say is let's not plug it in. We know it works. We've got time yeah. to do that. We know it works. We've seen it working. All straight to you, mate. All right, take one. And that's it. Really? <laughs> Wait for it. Oh, yeah. I bought a car. Another car? Yes. What it's a good car. Car? It's a good car. It's a Citroen 2CV. Coming with an MOT. It's low mileage, really original, great condition. It's just desperate for a clean and a polish. How many cars can can we have? We'll put it in the shop. It's only teeny, so, so we'll stick it in the shop and get it sold. I dread the day that our yard at home ends up looking like some of the yards Drew's described to me that he finds when he's out on the road. Should we have a cup of tea? Keeping clear of a domestic, restorer Gavin gets to work on the 18th century pew from the Herring Museum. This side would have been into the wall. So we just have to make the best of what we can out of it. Oh, that's all right. That's as good as, that's as, good as it's going to get. It's not bad. I definitely think it's got more age to it. This here, mm. see the way that narrows down there. I think we'll go with mid-18th century. And it's just a matter of days before the items begin to sell. The clock's been collected in the morning um, and it's on the way to Torquay, to a, a private residence. And there we go. It'll be a while before Drew can take delivery of his prize 2CV, but he's more than happy to make do until then with his purchase from Hamish. I bought recently a Series 1 Land Rover, and today we've brought it up here to see a friend of mine, John Craddock, to get it valued. 
John Craddock is uh, Mr. Land Rover. That's a light one, Drew. Yep. 52, 53. It's the moment of truth. Has Drew's love of cars overtaken his business instinct? Aluminium bulkhead. Yeah. You don't see many of them. God, that's beautiful. I've never seen one that nice. Really? Really. Didn't know it was that rare. They only made them in 52, late 52, October, November. Wow. They are very, very desirable. Rebecca is intrigued to hear John's evaluation. Will she be eating another slice of humble pie? Chassis is nice, isn't it? Yeah. You've got an, an engine that runs, yeah. bolt the wings back on, bit of welding on the front dumb irons. You put that back together, yeah. it's got to be worth two and a half thousand, I'd have thought. But that bulkhead, that's where the money is. What's it worth? I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to take it off, but... I could see that bulkhead making a thousand pounds. Fantastic. I can't wait to get it home and start messing around with it over the weekend. I just, just can't wait and go to the garage and just go into full Land Rover world and start tinkering and messing with it. And just, that's the fun. For me, that's the fun. That's the bit why I like these old cars. It's like I can go in there and do it myself. Don't trust me. I do, we do trust right, so you, we do. How much stuff do we sell a year? A lot. Thousands of items. A lot. A Who lot. does all the buying of these items? You, darling. Yes. OK, thank, thank you very much. So, thank you very much. So who's right and who's wrong? You're right, darling. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.